welcome to the Kill Stream. I'm your host, Ethan Ralph, the owner and the editor in chief of the Ralphator.com. Can I just start off the show by saying, fuck you, D Law, for not letting me log in on Chrome? I have no idea why that's not a fucking thing right now. It keeps saying authentication mismatch, and whatever the fuck you have coded here on, on Brave is not even working. Chat's not updating. It's complete shit, and I can't log in on Chrome. And that's the worst fucking shit of all, to be quite honest with you. There's no excuse for this. <sighs> Chrome f person spotted. Yeah, well, I use Brave. I have to use Chrome sometimes because of issues like this. <sighs> okay. Let's try it again. Maybe we can try it again. And the reason I had to switch is because... <laughs> Like, you know, periodically, it just stops showing the contributions. I don't know why that is. No clue. Let me try this again. I know this is thrilling. God damn it. Oh! It let me in. I will be goddamned. Thank you, D-Law. Appreciate it. Letting me into my own account. Okay. Sorry. I know you guys were thrilled to, to hear that at the beginning. Now, some of your contributions i can't read send in another one or email it. i'll give you a double i'll give you one for free fuck it uh red benzo i've had a red benzo before i imported some one time maybe i shouldn't get into that but anyway um red benzo says kangs can't breathe 2020 uh fuck susan fuck youtube fuck ethan klein Herod Silvatici with the big ninja Gini says, Brian Stelter, you are a disgusting whore. Your actions over hydroxychloroquine won't be forgotten. I don't think I saw what Stelter said today, actually. There's been so much going on on so many fronts. Um, I'm looking at it now. I don't know. We'll catch up. Just put it in the uh, suggest stories. I'll have Gator uh, grab that. Uh, let me at least read out the names. Oh, and then he finishes with you, sn sniveling piece of shit. I see Lord Zenu, WT Laws, My Boudet, Sword and Scale. I know he said something cool. But D Live ate that, so I apologize. Um, Tuesday here on her day. Shout out to her. Captain Seriously, a horrible gamer. Some others see not sorry. Uh, she just signed up for the Patreon, patreon.com slash the Ralph Retort, where you can find 16 different pieces of bonus audio, about 13 of those, 12 or 13 are full bonus shows, a couple of old uh, clips, one full old stream uh, with me and my ex-wife and a bunch of other people. Uh, actually, the biggest stream I ever hosted up until 2018 was the Allison Prime stream. It is live on patreon.com slash the Ralph Retort if you would like to support the show in that manner, and if you don't, well, then I just wasted my breath. And if you're already paying, thank you. <laughs> Clarth says, it's Digimam chat smasher pass Pantsy Party. Oh, that's not, look. <clears throat> Pantsy Party's coming on tomorrow night. That's correct, but we shouldn't. We shouldn't do that. That's not right. She's a guest on the show. We did mention the gap. We shouldn't have mentioned that. That was, I don't think that was that me that brought that up first. I don't think so. That's not, I don't recall. Gator will have to refresh my memory. Uh, by the way, Bo Blacks is going to be here in the 11 o'clock hour. We're going to talk about Keem and all that shit. We have a guest as well. Uh, logo day list or our cam. I'm not sure. We're going to figure that out. Um, Funger, wait, Funger Rumpies. By the way, I'm looking at chat. I don't know if chat, are they saying that I was the one who brought that up first? I don't think so. I think they're lying. Uh, Funger Rumpel says, don't ever stop, Ralph. I'll watch when you're 80. Thank you. That's the kind of support I like to hear. All right. Not Digi, bro. They were talking about his girlfriend. Well, anyway, whatever. Terry J says, Tuesday with a diamond on Wednesday. Thanks, sweet tits. Thanks, sweet tits. Isn't that from, um, uh, Lethal Weapon? I think so. Gator, what's up, man? Hey, uh -oh. buddy, I'm trying to find that uh, that story about uh, Stelter and hydroxychloroquine. I'm By trying the way, to find it. Find chat it. saying that that was me and that I bragged about spotting it first. That's not that's not what I recall, Gator. Eagle eyes uh, in the gap. <laughs> Gra gap gravitational pull. Is that is that what I was bragging about? OK, uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll have I don't to know, check. Chat's probably right. <laughs> 
I don't know. I think they misunderstood. They probably misinterpreted what I meant there, I'm sure. All right. Uh, how you been, Gator? Dream starts soon. No, uh, just took it off. No, no. You <laughs> waited too long. You waited too long. I, I had just get- taken it off. I was going to get you on that. <laughs> I missed my shot. By like two seconds. <laughs> Got to be quicker than that. Oh, my goodness. What should we lead off with? So we have the guest, Logo Daedalus, um, also known as uh, Arkham. What do you think the one that he goes by mainly is? I'm going to say because he wrote a book under the name Logo Daedalus that is Logo Daedalus. I think so, probably, yeah. But we're going to ask him about that. Uh, also, I'm just making sure. He could switch it up and, he could switch it up and mess with you and say, no, actually, it's our camp. <laughs> I'm also trying to make sure that uh, that the feed's still working. It appears to be, uh, but just to be sure. Uh, let's see. S. Vladimir celebrating a two-month streak. Very kind. Thank you. Herod Silvatici says, Gator it's a tweet he put out. He deleted it. Oh, okay. Look on that score. Oh, okay. By the way, Dude, reminder, if you're a sub on DLive, email me, the Ralph at the Ralvator.com. I'll get you the bonus material. There are a couple of you who email me um, right before the show or earlier in the day yesterday. I will get back to all the emails tonight, I swear. I was waiting to get the Allison Prime up so I could send you both episodes at the same time. So I apologize. And then I just went to sleep last night and forgot until just now. So I will do that after the show, though. I promise. Okay, now there's a couple other odds and ends. Let's see, where am I at here? LA-based comedian Dick's friend over on Twitter says, I just had a fantastic conversation with CantBot20K, at CantBot20K on Twitter. CantBot, he's coming on the show this Thursday. Uh, He was in uh, the movie TFW No GF, and we did a commentary track with Dick Masterson, uh, and uh, who who else was on that with him? Was it Vito? Uh, God, I think so. I think it was a bunch. It was a bunch of us. Uh, Flam was on that. Bibble was on that. I was on that. Um, I think it Pay was, was on that. I know. We brought a ton of people. We brought way too many people, actually. <laughs> way too many people. It should have. I don't know. It should have been like mean. four max. You know what it was? I said, oh, we're going to do a commentary. And I, it was in like our group or whatever. I said, oh, I'm going to do a commentary track. You know, the kill stream is going to do a commentary track with with dick masterson the dick show who all wants in on it and then of course every single person said yes and then i didn't feel like going through and <laughs> having to make the cut so there was six representatives or so from the kill stream uh asmador with 11 viewers now hosting shout out asmador okay uh now that's uh an update there so check that out i think catbot's gonna post that himself and then here's a little update from richmond lavar stoney is the mayor of Richmond. LeVar. Did you notice that his name was actually LeVar, too? We talked about how he looked like LeVar Burton, the reading Rainbow Man. But I'm not sure if you guys realize that his name is actually LeVar as well. Did wow, you know that? I did not know that. That's And I feel like fascinating. I, I feel like I neglected to mention that last week, and I really should have brought that up. But yeah, his name is LeVar Stoney. Like LeVar Burton, the exact same fucking name. I can't. I, I I don't even think that fully clicked in my brain until just now. We live in a simulation. We absolutely. All right. That's the only way that things can be this ridiculously hilarious. And a letter dated Monday to Governor Ralph Ralph Northam, the blackface man, uh, tweeted out Tuesday. Stoney said the phase reopening should maintain restrictions on gatherings at churches and places of worship, as well as those shuttering barber shops, salons, and other grooming services. Many of our faith leaders have told me that they do not believe it is safe to reopen at this time, uh, do not intend to reopen, and are worried about the health and safety of their parishioners, Stoney stated. That's the mayor of Richmond once again, here where I'm at. Barbershops and salons are certainly feeling the economic pressure of the extended closure, but also have concerns for the safety of their employees with prolonged exposure exposure to clients. Uh, And then, so that's the state of play. I guess they're actually going to open it up on the 28th, I believe. 28th or 29th what is the 29th saturday yeah i think it might be the 29th yeah. actually uh that they're gonna open it up this friday so yeah, they should be doing this on uh fridays uh it's like usually like friday at like 5 p.m i don't understand why like 5 p.m uh especially for like barber shops and shit so they're gonna be open for like two hours tops yeah i look i need a haircut no law i haven't got one since the day before af pack in dc and it's starting to get a little. Ugh, I'm starting to want to get it cut at this point. But you're starting to look like the uh, the forest yeah. doomer. 
Uh, I'm waking up with just crazed hair just all over the place now. But, eh, I don't know. I'm still not sure I want to sit in that close of a company just yet with the person who's been sitting in very close company with about, you know, 30, 40 other people that day. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. see here's what's going to happen. We've gone through this entire lockdown and neither one of us has gotten coronavirus. It's going to fucking happen in like the next week or so. One of us is going to fucking get it. Oh, uh, come on. Because. Don't say that. Gator, don't say that. We're not getting it. No, it's gonna it's it's absolutely gonna fucking happen because the lockdown the lockdown it really ultimately did nothing. All right, now and I now, hate to say that, but it did black pill gator up. rolling through. All right, now you know shout, me. Shout out to the uh, to the restream over on YouTube as well. Chill stream uncut, all one word. Uh, now the governor here also gave a little. This isn't guidance, actually. This is a public mandate now, apparently. Northam, Northam, Governor Blackface, says Virginians must wear masks in public buildings and businesses starting Friday. Uh, by the way, I had to go to a couple of public places today, buildings, you know. I've been trying to limit my trips, but every once in a while I have to run to the corner store or whatever. Uh, and I stay masked up every time I go in there. But a lot of people do not, Gator. A lot of people are are, are eschewing, eschewing. I have the fuck, gotta fuck that up. Eschewing the uh, the mandate or suggestion in some places to wear masks. Um, what about you? When you go out, are you wearing a mask? Nope. Well, why not? That's what I want to ask. Now, look, Be I'm not because they don't actually do anything. Okay. Well, why are they telling everybody to wear them though? You think that's just horseshit or? It is. It, well, I'll tell you what it is. It's to encourage people that are sick to wear the masks. If somebody that's sick coughs on you and you're wearing a surgical mask, you're still going to get it because the droplets are going to uh, bypass the mask. It's still going to happen. What they're trying to do is they're trying to tell everybody to wear a mask so that the people that are sick when they sneeze, most yes. of the droplets are contained. That is the entire point. That's true. But, but what's wrong with telling people that? to do shit. When they're telling people to do shit like wear a bandana, that doesn't actually work. It's all a cope. That's all it is. Yeah, but it's to keep you from infecting other people, really. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to protect you that much, if at all. From... But, I mean, you're still going to infect people even if also you're depending wearing on, a now, Look, it's depending on what kind of mask you have, too. You know, the respirator masks and, and stuff like that are a lot more effective than, you know, just the surgical mask and stuff that I've been wearing. Um, those are mostly just to protect other people. I don't know. I've been wearing them. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and lie. And, and again, I'm not been as gung ho as a lot of people. Obviously, I, I've wanted this shit opened up for a minute now, but I still wear the mask. That's why I'm. That's why I asked that because I really don't see a reason not to wear a mask. I don't know. Yeah, that's well, that's just me. I mean, I am uncomfortable, well, I guess, with public mandates about it and stuff like that. But I was having this conversation internally earlier, and I was thinking, what, what. Logic is there for not wearing a mask, really? I see some people in chat are mad about me for saying this, but. Well, look, it's I'll tell you what what the whole mask thing is. It's about making people feel safer and secure. It's a cope. It's a coping mechanism. That's what it is. The CDC knows that the wearing a bandana or whatever, or wearing a surgical mask isn't really as effective as they're pretending it is. They just want people to feel like they can go out and do normal activities and that they won't contract the virus. What's actually going to happen, because people are stupid, rule number one of life, people are stupid. They're going to do stuff like sneeze, and they're going to put their hand on their mask, or they're going to try to like wipe it off with their shirt. And if they have coronavirus, they're going to be touching all of the particulates that came from their mouth and their nose or whatever. And they're going to be wiping it on everything, and it completely defeats the purpose. This is how people operate. And now that the lockdown is ending, people's paranoia about constantly washing their hands and maintaining cleanliness is going to go out the window. Well, I'm telling you what, mine's not gone out the window, and I'm keeping my shit washed up, and I'm keeping the mask on. And uh, I know some people might disagree. I mean, I don't really, I'm uncomfortable with it being mandated, I guess. But uh, on the other hand, I really don't. Especially right now. I mean, you know, if it's six months from now, whatever. I just really don't know that it's that big of an inconvenience. I see some people are already worked up about me saying that uh, in the chat. But is it really that bad uh, to wear the mask? Why do they wear the mask, Gator? 
That's us. <laughs> Because it would be extremely painful. <laughs> Eric Silvacici she says, <laughs> my first diamond I tweeted, Twitter suspended me. Yeah, I missed a couple of those early ones. I'm sorry again, guys, for that. Uh, Spick Mick says, a mask is useless if your eyes are exposed. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because I wear sunglasses every single time I go out, too. Um, and I don't use, well, unless it's at night, uh, obviously, uh, but I don't really go out at night. So lately the last two or three months. So yeah, I actually have the sunglasses on with the mask as well. So you are correct. Uh, I thought of that now. Let's see. Fax yourself says facts. <laughs> fax yourself says wear a mask for your health. You big prince by tour says one bank robbery with guys in masks. No more masks. Howard Silvatici links about Stelter, I guess. Uh, let's see. Let me go to the right room. Also, we're going to bring on the guests here momentarily. We're definitely going to get into the Keemstar Klein stuff. Keemstar, in case you didn't see on Twitter uh, before we came on the air, got struck down. He took Gokunaru's epic takedown. I still, I don't even think I, I kind of skimmed through it last year, and then it got struck down. I've seen parts of it. It's been reposted elsewhere, uh, but it got a lot of publicity when it came out already. Uh, it got struck down. So Keemstar took his video, I guess made a couple little edits or whatever, posted it back up on YouTube today. It had hundreds of thousands of views, if not a million, uh, by the time YouTube struck it down again, this time on Killer Keemstar himself's channel, which was a really big fuck you right to Keemstar and everybody else, basically, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's like well, I said okay, earlier today. Okay, that's true. Wait, that's true. There is a technicality. They didn't give him an official strike. They just removed it. But I'm going to call it a strike. It's the same thing. But I guess he didn't get an official strike. Well, they said he violated the, the yes. policy on harassment yes. and bullying. Yes. Even if they don't issue him a strike, they removed the video for a TOS violation. Yes, that's true. So if you want to get technical, you could, you know, I guess the more accurate would be YouTube removes, you know, Keemstar's video, but I would count that as getting struck down, even if there's not an official sanction on the account. Um, we've seen that before too, especially recently. That used to not be a thing, but uh, recently sometimes YouTube just takes it down uh, without even giving a strike and just says it's inappropriate now. Um, it happened so. to Rand like four or five times on one of yeah. his streams. They would keep taking it down for no reason, and he wouldn't get a strike for it. They just take it down, and you have to fire up another one. I've seen it happen to Augie once or twice. Herbert Silvatici says, "I got into it with him and got suspended for twelve hours." Uh, is this the tweet you're talking about? Again, I didn't see what Stelter said. Let me pull that up. We'll bring the guests on about five minutes. I'll message him. Uh, Trump on hydroxy. Here's my evidence. I get a lot of positive calls for it. WHO, World Health, World Health Organization on hydroxy. Temporarily halting a massive trial of the drug in COVID-19 patients due to safety concerns after the Lancet published a troubling story. Story. And again, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be an expert on <laughs> hydroxychloroquine. That's not my strong suit, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And I haven't followed all the back and forth. I'm not taking that shit. I don't give a fuck. I mean, if, if I get really sick and they say you have to take it to live, yeah. But I don't know. Whatever. I, I I guess Trump's in a more unique situation being the president and all, but I think I'll probably pass on it. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? The the whole hydroxychloroquine thing? I did see somebody in chat mention that maybe Ralph already got the coof uh, in D.C. I was sick when I came back from D.C., actually. Um, so, I mean, I guess technically it's possible, but I'm still going to wear the mask. Anyway, go ahead. Ah. <laughs> uh. My take on the hydroxychloroquine thing is that uh, there's a there's some night negative side effects. There's always going to be negative side effects with medication. I think it's worth a shot to at least see. Um, there are some positive studies. There are some negative studies. Uh, ultimately, we won't really know, you know, unless you try it. I don't think it's a one size fits all solution. I don't think it's going to work for everybody. But, you know, medicine is it's it's about experimenting. It's about seeing what works. People's bodies are all different. No body is going to react the same way to a particular medication that another person does. You just don't know until you try it. Yeah, I would have to agree. By the way, uh, entropystream.live slash the Roth Retort uh, is also up right now uh, at killstream.live over on Twitter. Uh, we do have them kill stream boys. I just saw they tweeted that out a few moments ago. We have, we have the account runner 
firmly in the control seat. That is not me. Uh, we have a, uh, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't give away too much mystery there again. We should leave the mystery. Uh, but yes, we do have someone else running that account. Uh, okay. Now let's see. Herbert Sobatici says, Ralph, you're best taking it early, not late. The negative studies are for taking it late. Well, I'm just got, gonna, I don't have Corona. You know what's, what? What the one study I found interesting was the study that showed uh, vitamin D intake relative to the, uh, the cytokine storm that the virus creates in your body. It seemed like there was a correlation between uh, proper levels of vitamin D and actually being able to successfully fight the virus off. So that's that, that's just an interesting. It was an interesting study. <laughs> By the way, so I just see. Uh, I, just, I just see. I just saw. Um, Spick mentioned that uh, Sony DMCA themselves. See if you can grab something on that. I saw that all over Twitter today. Oh yeah, I tweeted that out today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> funny. Put that cool. in the show links. Um, and then I'll I'll go ahead and message the guest. Let him know I'm gonna about to bring him on. Uh, let's see, bringing on three minutes. Uh, what do we have before we bring him on? See. Well, let me get let me go tweet real quick. This was funny. Okay. Shit. Yeah, let's do that. We can hit that up, and then we'll you know let that uh, marinate. We can definitely do that probably in a couple of minutes. Also, Minnesota's burning the fuck down right now. Apparently, what? Oh yeah, I think some uh, some youth got killed there. With the was it a youth? I don't know. I just said that by the way. Um, I guess they were using a, a chokehold with a knee or something. I just saw the headline. I'm not gonna sit here in front like I know the whole story. Um, cause I was busy with other shit today, but, um, yeah, so, uh, isn't that, that's, oh, that's right. He's up there, huh? What did he yeah. say? About <laughs> I haven't seen well, the tape, said- by the way. I don't defend every police killing just for the record. I think, I think we know that on the kill stream already. Uh, but you know, what really pisses me off is the, the race hustlers and the grifters jumping in and making everybody who's ever been critical of the police look like fucking complete morons when they take up the cause of somebody who deserved to get killed by the police. So um, that's what really pisses me off. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, he was. uh, Here's his first tweet. He says, it sure looks like they killed this dude. Response to a forgery in process and suspect, quote, resisted arrest. No video of resistance. Wait, 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 wait. A forgery in process was what they were called there for? A forgery. Oh, a forgery. And that means something you're writing with a pen. Is that what? I guess. <laughs> or I thought it. Wow. What a threatening, a threatening action going on here. Sorry. I mean, I don't know. Look, I haven't seen the footage. I don't know all the backstory, but it doesn't sound that threatening. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, let me go back. to He said, uh, <laughs> suspect, re- quote, resisted arrest. No video of resistance. Confirmed no weapons by either cops or suspect. Watch the video if you can. Make up your own mind. Yeah, you know, that's why I was asking what he said, because I I tend to have more of, when it comes to stuff like that, I'm a little bit more Team Ricada, <laughs> to be honest with you, when it comes to uh, being critical uh, of the police. But I, at the same time, I don't respect, you know, the DeRays of the world and the Sean Kings of the world who are complete fucking morons and make anybody ever critical of the police look bad just by dint of even a possibility of being associated with their ignorance. Uh, we, you know what? Give some links on that. We probably going to need to cover that. I think, um, do we, is the footage out? How, how bad is it? Green I don't danger, know. green danger in the, uh, the chat saying that he was accused of writing a bad check. Yeah. That's what they were saying in the chat too. <clears throat> yeah, clearly that, that's, uh, that called for some serious action. All right. Uh, let's see. Cold still the hedgehog says, wear the mask, get the vaccine, get good goy points. They're saying it's really bad. PG, though. I mean, they killed a guy on that. I don't know. It seems like they were, um, <sighs> they, like, he had his knee on his neck, and he was saying he couldn't breathe, and they basically choked him to death. Yeah, that's, that's what I understood from the headline. Every Silva TG says, yes, Gator is right. Vitamin D, massive vitamin C, and zinc. Also, the police, what are you doing? Why are you killing people like this? Like, what the fuck? That's the last thing that was needed right now. Okay, anyway, sorry. We'll just take, we'll just bring the guest in. Logo Daedalus, or is it Arkham? Which one do you want us to call you? Uh, Logo's fine. Can you guys hear me? Yes, you sound great, sir. All right, cool. Yeah, okay, I guess I'll, I was just playing chess. I guess I'll stop now. (laughs) (laughs) Would be the first time. We're more of checker players here on the kill stream, but so every once in a while, you know, a game of chess. How how you doing, man? Uh, now, 
this is your first time on the kill stream for all new guests uh and usually for almost all guests even if they came back uh i let them give a little intro here for themselves uh what do you do online how should people know you how do they know you what's up uh, i'm logo uh i wrote a book called selfie suicide which you should google right now it's on amazon and then uh purchase it or uh even go on libgen and pirate it i really don't give a fuck but read my book because it's really fucked now you mentioned your book selfie suicide why don't you tell us what's about um that's like i don't know no one ever wants to say what the fuck their book's about but well, i it's mean like, don't it's, give it's, us everything about it but give, <laughs> you know what that's funny because i said the same thing to delicious tacos last week and he's like well yeah. i mean read the book you know i'm not giving everything away i didn't mean give away everything but you know DT's a good guy. We're uh, we're actually friends. I, I know <laughs> he's him. hilarious, by the way. He was great last week. Yeah, he's a great writer, also. But yeah, my book's like a little different than his. It's more um, experimental, I'd say. It's like more like uh, sci-fi. Uh, I guess like the elevator pitch would be like um, like a really fucked up version of like Black Mirror if it was like actually in touch with like contemporary uh, I don't know incel culture, like weird online niche kind of shit. Oh, um it's it's like about a guy it's like about a guy who's like you know a super fuck up loser um trying to be an artist who's like decided to kill himself but is going on one last tinder date and then his kind of mind unravels okay now i see uh you mentioned uh delicious tacos being a friend of yours i see customers who viewed this also viewed and then they have a couple a couple of his books up there now what inspired you to write this book um, I don't know. I've just like always wanted to write. That's basically like why I have a Twitter account in the first place. I just started writing on Twitter and then uh, it kind of went from there. But I, I like writing like, you know, like poetry, fiction, essays and stuff. This idea just came to me uh, very specifically. I was hung over at an Ikea and uh, I just had this idea. And uh, if you read the book, it'll make sense like why it happened in that exact location. But um, yeah, so I had like an image and then it kind of uh, grew from there. Now, um, let me ask you, I saw you described as a part, was it, was it you? I think it was you that I was reading the other day, a part of weird Twitter. Was that, I think that was him Gator that I saw that. What is weird Twitter? Do you know? Oh know. man. Well, like, I don't know. There's like a lot of, there's been a lot of waves of weird Twitter or whatever it's called weird Twitter. It's usually just like a kind of box for, uh, people using the medium in like an artistic way, I guess, as opposed to just like, uh, I don't know, like talk talking about the fucking news or what do people talking do on Twitter? Talking shit like I do on mine. <laughs> Just like quote tweeting news reporters and being like, wow, this oh, is so dumb. Hold on. That's, that's, nothing, that's not necessarily nothing wrong with that. I mean, but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, uh, it does get... Um, it's different when you look at somebody from we or quote unquote weird Twitter or whatever and their tweets versus, you know, standard. Yeah, like it's my, there's yeah. just like a lot of uh, intersections of different like subcultures. So like, I don't know, like people have... Like, uh, I don't know, kind of intersected with uh, Frog Twitter for a bit um, or like way back in the day, it was like neo reactionary stuff. And then like people are calling it like the alt right. It's like, I don't know, I see it more as like a kind of amorphous mass of a bunch of just like individual people posting about things that are kind of tangentially related. And then people kind of, you know, decide that this is like a movement or something. I, I don't really know. <laughs> and then they go back to shit posting when once the movement part is done. No. Yeah, I don't even know what the fuck is the movement part. <laughs> yeah, even. I don't know. You, you, you post more. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> now um, we're gonna have Cantbot on this Thursday. Uh, we we talked about him being in the in the film. Uh, I'm not sure how you say it. TFW, no GF. The feeling yeah, that works. No girlfriend. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so we did a commentary track on it. We're gonna have him on uh, on Thursday. Uh, I think you know him. Yeah, um, we're good friends. Uh, I'm actually yeah. in that in the uh, yes. like little viral clip. Um, I'm the guy who's telling everyone to burn the books. Uh, in the uh, now we that, have that, that clip. classic video. Now we have that clip. Gator, you sent it to me earlier. I'm trying to find it right now. Hold on. Uh, we played it on this show before. Oh, here it is, right here. Uh, about Trump. <laughs> Which one is better, the first one you linked or the second one, Gator? Well, the first one um, has some uh, windmills of peace in it, so uh, you might want okay, to go with the well, second one. Yeah, we'll probably do the second one. <laughs> D Live's not too too big on the windmills. Okay, now here goes the here goes the second link. You see show links over there, Daedalus? Uh yeah. Okay, grab I so. that. I mean, you lived it, so I don't know if you need to watch it, but uh, it won't yeah, come. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it won't come through your headset though, uh, so you have to pull it up. I'm gonna go ahead and play it, and I'm gonna play it uh, just a little refresher. Uh, right now. I didn't vote. I don't believe in democracy. Okay. You know, I believe in Thule, the ancient city, and raising Thule, 
And I think that Trump is the candidate who's going to raise school and Atlantis. I believe in global cooling, cooling the earth, the sea, lo the sea levels lowering, and I believe in land raising from the bottom of the ocean with ancient ruins on it, like the ruins of Thule. And I believe that Trump's going to accomplish all of that. How? He's going to prove that UFOs exist. The government has known about it for a long time. They've known that the UFOs are out there and that they're trying to communicate with us and that they have secrets about the origins of human consciousness. Are you familiar with the philosopher Friedrich Schelling? Have you read the critical historical introduction to the philosophy of mythology? Schelling is a German idealist philosopher. He was roommates with Holderlin and with Hegel. And he talks about all of this. He predicted it a long time ago. Trump is going to make German idealism real. He's going to complete the system. Kant, he could not complete the system of German idealism. Trump is going to complete the system. He's going to derive the complete system. That was terrifying you, right? That terrifies you, right? It terrifies me. How can we complete the system of German idealism? How do we do it? I don't know. No one could do it. Hegel couldn't do it. Schelling couldn't do it. Victor couldn't do it. Ryan O couldn't do it. Milan couldn't do it. No one could complete the system of German idealism. Well, that would be good. It's good that we don't complete it, right? I mean, they almost did in 1933 to 45. They had a little one. German idealism. First critique published in 1781. Trump is a Kantian. I want it to be clear to everyone here. Donald Trump is a Kantian. He's a German idealist. Wow. Well, he's a, okay. He's a drum. He's a drum. He's a drum. Can someone Google that? He was a drum. He's, he's a German a idealist. Are you um, German are idealist. you from New York? No, I'm not from New York. Are you? Uh, how old are you? You look really young. Say. I can't are you, say. I'm eternal. Have you, have you, have you been to Have you been to college? <laughs> I'm not in college. I just want everyone to know. Everyone needs to be aware that the system of German idealism is about to be complete. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and pause it because we watched the whole thing the other day. Uh, the funniest part, one of the funniest parts, that guy goes, well, I don't know. They had a they had a pretty good run from 1933 to 1945. Uh, <laughs> fundamentally misunderstood. He just did not understand. Meant. Yeah, he did not, did not get it. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Neil Moon says, the footage was fucked. My city is going crazy. Oh, you're actually there in it. Oh, Neil. Oh. Yeah, yeah, stay on the line. We'll bring you on. Oh, uh, I didn't think about that. You being up there, too. Not a great day. Now, we talked about Twitter uh, already, Logo. Um, now, you saw... I, I mean, I'm assuming you saw uh, Twitter itself and Trump going back and forth, which we really haven't talked about yet. Uh, so, I guess I'll go ahead and read that. Twitter adds uh, a fact-check warning to Trump's tweets, which uh, they actually did, unbelievably. Uh, let me see if I can find that tweet. It has a little uh, blue exclamation mark on it now, uh, linking to, I guess, oh, here it goes. Get the facts about mail-in ballots. Uh, I'm assuming that Trump did not like that type of sanction, Gator, where they put a, a, little, uh, a little exclamation point beneath all his tweets, uh, and I think Gator's dead. By the way, panelists, uh, are you here? <laughs> Did you see that? Uh, yeah, yeah, hold I, on. I'll pull it up. Okay. Yeah, uh, I got no. it pulled up. Yeah, I got it pulled up on the screen. Uh, do you think Trump is actually going to do anything about Twitter fucking with him, or is this just bullshit? Because I got into it with people on the timeline, uh, and I said, I think Twitter's probably going to regret uh, fucking with Trump on this just because it's going to be a headache. Now, is he actually going to you know, shut down Twitter or send in the police to confiscate um, you know, their their assets or anything like that? Probably not. But I do. I could see Trump making it hell for them almost every single day. Um, do you see it? Do you do you know? Do you want to comment about this at all? This is one of the topics I have to talk about anyway. So, uh, I don't really know. I just know that they're uh, trying to fucking destroy the platform this year. Like, I don't know. Do you guys have? Have you guys been dealing with the new update or whatever? Like with the new reply threading, it's been driving me insane. I don't like it at all. <laughs> Well, it's, it's just designed to make the uh, actual metrics of things like as obscure as possible so that, uh, you know, like fucking advertising and like uh, all that sort of shit will look better. And uh, it'll be harder to tell when people are getting ratioed and whatnot. And uh, I'm pretty sure that they're going to just phase out like being able to see these things like immediately. Like yep. the, uh, the like and retweet counts, probably just just make it the world safe for like Condé Nast brands. 
they really want to do that already, but they've trained people so well. I mean, it's a dopamine hit. That's they designed it around that. Uh, but Instagram's already phased out, at least here in the U.S. I think it's worldwide now, where you can't see the number of people who like the post unless it's your account or whatever. Um, there's a lot of little things they're doing for you know for the health of the conversation, public health, and uh, and all this shit. Now I think you're talking about where I, I think it's being tested now. I don't know that it's rolled out to mine yet, but uh, goddamn mosquito tried to bite. Fuck out of here. Um, but it's where you can send out a tweet and then pick specific people that you want to be able to reply to the thread. Is that what you're talking about? Or uh, nobody. That, or that's nobody. A thing. Yeah. I, I just mean more like the way uh, I often write like threads, right? So like I'll like, have a post. I'm just kind of like writing like a stream of consciousness of like an idea I have or whatever. So I'll do like a bunch of linked tweets together. And uh, now if like people reply to one of them, it'll like fuck up the chain basically. And then within the chain, you can only see the uh, metrics for whichever one's highlighted at that time, like per tweet. So like, it's kind of, it's kind of fucked that up for me. I don't know. I just, I used, I liked writing threads and now I feel like I should just do like only individual tweets again. Oh, you mean when you look at it? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Where when you used to look at it, it would be one thread all the way up down. You could just read it all the way down. Now, if somebody intervenes, uh, yeah, they want to spotlight replies and stuff. I don't know. I really don't understand what they're doing with the whole ui over there on twitter just in general it's just annoying i'm pretty sure they're just like trying to destroy the platform <laughs> yeah. because i'm like not even kidding though because it's like we've been calling it like the last stop on the internet because it really is like pretty much everywhere else sucks uh i don't even like use other websites because like what the fuck like everything's just downstream from shit people are posting on twitter honestly like all of the like anything you see like journalists writing right they're just copying takes they read on fucking twitter because all the journalists are on twitter so like there's really no other fucking website to be on so if they fuck this like maybe i'll just like go live in the woods now the reason yeah you you said it right there and we talked about this already but the reason why twitter is so i mean on previous shows um the reason why it's really kind of affects the conversation so much is because every single fucking journalist you ever heard of or thought about hearing of is on twitter 24 7 um that's why when milo got banned and some other people's got banned it really hurts to get kicked out of that conversation because uh you know people just forget you exist the media yeah basically i mean uh, so i I have to stand trump here as the shit poster in chief right like if he's gonna defend our rights as a shit poster is on the platform like god bless him because like that's like the best thing he's done right is like yeah, I'll be serious about being it. Being the shit poster president. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, it, it kind of is. I think they probably would have cleaned up Twitter a lot harder already uh, if it wasn't for Trump. And he kind of stretches the Overton window for almost everybody, too, with the shit he's tweeting out. Okay. Yeah, he's a hero in that <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, well, fuck, the president is that here, you know, accusing Joe Scarborough of murder. What do you mean? I just. That's fucking... so fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and calling Joe Biden a pedophile. <laughs> I love that he brought up the Scarborough shit because I actually went back and deleted a tweet. <laughs> I sent it Scarborough like eight months ago talking about this. Now all of a sudden it's, oh my God, how could you say these things about Joe Scarborough? And I was sitting here thinking, uh, I think I've tweeted about this like 20 or 30 times <laughs> over the years. What are you talking about? I didn't realize this was so far out of bounds, Twitter. Anyway. All right, let's bring in some callers. Needle Moon, you're on the kill stream. What's up? Oh, shit. Uh, hey. What's up? Do we bother you? No, um, the <laughs> stupid call bot disappeared out of nowhere. But, um, oh, so... Oh, it must have, it must have, it must have, uh, committed not alive. Hold on, I'll try to fix it. Yeah. Okay, there yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, anyway, I was, I'm just watching the live protest now. What's going on with the protests in the city? Now, where are you at? Well, I mean, if you want to tell us, you already did, basically, so... Well, I am a Minneapolis. <laughs> I mean, it's too late now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. From what I saw the video, the guy was like laying on the ground. The police is standing on his neck. Uh, there was a bunch of people like screaming at him to get off the guy's neck. One of them looked like they wanted to fight the police officer. It was fucked up. And then I later, usually would not recommend fighting the police just from my own experience. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no. But yeah, they went to the precinct. Um, first, they were protesting in front of the Cup Foods where he got killed, and then they went in front of the precinct. And then, I guess they started like throwing a glass and <laughs> vandalizing the car, and there was flashbangs and shit. I'm just like... <sighs> yeah, I posted I a uh, couple of pictures that uh, 
somebody took. Uh, I'll repost that uh, tweet again. Oh, and Baltimore police officer just got shot, shot, apparently, by the way. Go ahead, uh, Neil. Damn. Shit. A Baltimore, Baltimore protester died, too. Uh, a <laughs> police officer got uh, gunned down. I don't know. I don't know the full story. That just broke a few minutes ago. Uh, but, yeah, go ahead. Fill us in on more of what's going on there. What, what did you say your friend was talking about? My friend, when I showed him the video, he was, like, talking about how he would, like, want to fight them. And so I'm talking to my friend and then watching this vi- video of people, like, protesting and shit. And he's, like, going all, like, yeah, throw the rocks. I'm, like, and I'm, like, no, no. And then, <laughs> and then they start doing flash I'm, like, no. And apparently someone got shot and shit. I don't know. It's all crazy. Well, stay safe out there, Neela. Definitely don't uh, go out and join. <laughs> I would stay at the house. I will not me. go out and join. <laughs> Send yeah. a tweet or something. No. I think, yeah. <laughs> we need all types of activism. <laughs> no. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Neela. Have a good one. All right. Um, let's see. Fascinating. Rush Lim- yes. Rush Limbaugh Groiper uh, says, yeah, that she's up there where the cop got. Or, well, the cop did the killing up there. A cop got killed in Baltimore. Rush Limbaugh Groiper says, great Tucker clip from tonight is in Suggest Stories. We have a Tupper, a Tupper, a Tucker clip already, but I wonder if it's the same one. Let me see. Uh, I think this is the same one, Gator. It probably uh, is. Let's see. I'll send it to you. Um, let's see. Okay. Now, how's your book been doing, um, Mr. Logo Daylist? How's, how's it uh, uh, Oh. It's been selling pretty well. Um, I'm hoping this will kick it up a notch. So again, like uh, Google selfie suicide, those are two words you can remember. And uh, yeah, you'll find it pretty easily. And then you can download it or you can buy it and get a physical copy of it. And then oh, you nice. can read it. That's and it's really good. It's really <laughs> fucking good too. It's crazy. Now, Selfie Suicide, I have to give all the props for that title because I love that title. Uh, and as an old, I mean, every once in a while, I still do the tabloid blogging, uh, but that was how I came up, that type of uh, stuff. And the title is so important. Probably the absolute most important thing, at least with what I did and with books as well. The title, it's so important. You can have the best book ever, and if it's a shit title, you know, people are just not going to pick that shit up. Selfie suicide, the alliteration, alliteration. Oh, so important. There one you those, go. You're a one poet. Of those, one of those timeless things that never goes out of style, sir. They've known it since the ancients. Uh, alliterative uh, language is just. So that's right. So Once more, selfie suicide. Go. <laughs> there you buy go. That <laughs> so, so I can have money. <laughs> All right. Let's bring us more callers. Uh, Cooper, you're on with Logo Dayless, author of Selfie Suicide. Go ahead, sir. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good, actually. Doing well, bud. Yeah. How are you doing? Uh, I, you know, I was doing well until I saw, uh, I'm looking at the headline and listening in, and you guys weren't really talking about the holiday. The holiday. It's a uh, hundred vest streak tomorrow. I don't know what that is. Wait, say it again. It's the hundred vest streak tomorrow. The hundred vest streak. I don't. Oh, okay. I, oh, do. I had to Google that. I had yeah. to Google that. I do. How do you guys not know about this? I'm sorry. I'm not a DSP guy. I'm sorry. I know it now, though. I vaguely remember it. I see it. Yes, the hundred vest. Why don't you explain I've... for the people who don't like me who didn't know what the fuck you were talking about? And had to Google it. Why don't you tell people what the hundred vest streak is? Well, uh, DSP has a tip goal that he likes to reach every single day, and he politely, uh, obviously asks. And I only know DSP actually from the montages. Like, I only know him <laughs> from, like, there's, I, today, they were so funny. And I, I, gotta, I gotta catch him live tomorrow. I have no clue what time it is, but I actually think it might be <laughs> DSP's biggest thing. <laughs> You sound genuinely excited to catch DSP live tomorrow, too. Like, like, some of the clips that they get make me cry laughing. <laughs> I mean, they're so good. And it's just like... <laughs> it's just it's just what the doctor ordered. I recommend anyone to uh, get in it if you're not in it. And, uh, yeah, uh, that, 
Congrats on DSP your... needs to come on the kill stream. I think he thinks I hate him or something. I don't give a fuck. Like, well, I mean, some people not... actually do hate DSP, but I don't. I was never invested in DSP really. I mean, we we talked about him, we've written about him. You know, I lost the bet. I had to put the DSP, you know, on the screen or whatever the little logos of his or the versions, whatever they were. Dancing fills. I forget what the fuck I put on the screen. Uh, but I I would love to have him on the kill stream. I mean, that's, uh, I will go onto his stream tomorrow, donate, and get a little go on yeah, kill stream action. Him. Yeah, see what he says about that. Oh, I'm not paying him to show up, though. I saw somebody. No, I'm, it's, it's uh, the donations all he's getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, uh, I saw, I've heard that mentioned before that you could pay DSP an appearance fee. That doesn't feel right. I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't that's think uh, so. good stuff, but you guys I'll have let a good him one. Promote his shit, but I'm not going to pay him to show up. But uh, thank you, Cooper. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, have a good one. See ya. All right, you too. Psyched for DSP. I wish I could get that excited for DSP. Mike Hanshaw, go ahead. You're on the kill stream. Hey, guys. How's everyone doing tonight? Pretty, pretty good. How about you? Well, you know, I'm I'm living wonderfully. Thank you for asking. So first things, uh, my future governor who likes to wear blackface can suck my dick. Just putting that out there. Uh, careful, careful that you offer that. He just might. No, uh, we're talking about Northam, right? I'm I'm trying to think if there's other governors. Yeah, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm okay. Moving to Virginia. Oh yeah, that's right. Nice blackface man. Yeah, I'm sure you'll love it here as much as I do. It's the best. Mm, uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, you know, I'm all for protesters take a knee so i don't really understand why this cop was protesting and took a knee and everyone got so mad about it <sighs> but no in all seriousness the police are getting fucking worse by the day and all the quarantine wildness has just empowered the state governments to allow cops to run rampant with almost no accountability and you're going to continue to see shit like this <sighs> uh we're probably about to see black hawk down part two because minneapolis is home to mogadishu the second Somalian insurge of refugees. And that's just not a really good area to be playing. These Somebody fucking in chat snapper. called him Colin Snapperneck. Oh, that's not, that's not, right. <laughs> Ooh, that is not, that's right. a rough one. If that joke wasn't so horrible, we wouldn't have to disavow it. Oh, I have to disavow that. I'm sorry. That's not, oh, I mean, mm. But the biggest thing is we have to we have to bring race relations up so I can finally find and marry Doja Cat. <laughs> now you were talking about did we not even we didn't even get to Doja Cat the other day, did we? Uh, I couldn't tune in last night to hear. Oh, but, I'm trying to think. I don't think we did. Where she uh, anyway? It, maybe we'll get to that. I don't. I don't. We have a guest here, so I don't want to go fully into the Doja Cat thing. All I, I know is that that song was good. <laughs> Sir, I'm going to ask that you speak very kindly about the future Mrs. Hancho. All I know <laughs> is that woman. one of my friends is uh, going to marry Land Sharks. I mean, Land Shark, my, my friend, is going to marry Doja Cat. So uh, you're going to have to you're gonna have to fight I, out with him. And he's, I assure a, he's Bulgarian, you, I, so I'm, okay, he's probably going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to put that on the fight card in Knoxville. I assure you, I will fight for my lady's, uh, my lady's honor. She's not even that. Come on. She's no, it's it's mostly the lulls at this point. Yeah, you're not even <laughs> serious. This is what I'm saying. You don't deserve it. definitely going to land shark. <laughs> More like mud shark. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate you calling in. You got anything else real quick? Uh nah, I'll bring up more shit posty ideas I have later. Y'all have a wonderful night. Stay safe, boys. Thank you, too, thank you, sir. You too, man. All right, uh, there he goes to the D Live Radio. Tabernacle, you're on the kill stream. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Hey, what's up, buddy? We're taking all your calls tonight. Go ahead. Hello, hello. Oh, motherfucker. Except yours. I'm about to throw you out. Tabernacle, hello. why can't you hear me? Oh, my God. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, Tabernacle. Go yes, ahead. We can. All right. Well, we have a writer on again, so I figured I'd come in for a few questions. But uh, two things first. Uh, the corona, you don't have to worry. We the always have a fake. writer on, sir. I mean, I'm the host. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess. Go ahead, go, guess, ahead course, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I feel insulted, but I'll let you continue. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, quickly, the corona thing is is a big fake, as we all know. Mask are a joke. And if you, I mean, if you, unless no, you're wait, brief, we don't, I, we don't you all have know to, that. Wait, 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 wait. Have to write the virus with, hold on, with hold on, mask, wait, wait, Tabernacle, only... Tabernacle, don't speak over me, sir. Hold on. Yeah, be careful. This is D Live. This is owned by China. Just Watch wait a word. minute. No, it's not even not that. 
I'm just saying we don't know that coronavirus is fake. Hold on. Now we've seen, we've heard that said. Now what do you mean? You're you're saying that the whole, didn't we have this conversation last time? It seems I, like I'm we just, did. I, I'm I'm just saying it uh, anyway. And that basically wait wait wait. HBQ... What do you mean by fake? That's what I want you to say. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Don't just go into your rant. What do you mean by coronavirus is fake? Well, I mean it's a long it's a long big story, but basically it's all a big sham for 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 our friends over there at the <laughs> at our great big friendly country that love Winnie the Pooh. Now, I mean, I remember now. I'm I mean, starting to remember a little bit about your last. Call. Anyway, go ahead. Go I mean, ahead. Ba- go and ahead. on the mask, it's basically if you wear one and you there is a virus, then you're you're only increasing the chances that you'll breathe it in every breath you take instead but of you already normal have... breathing. All right, now so that's what anyway. I was saying. Now hold on, that's not a thing. You can't the, breathe the, in more of the virus that you already have. Okay. No, I'm saying if, if a virus does come by and you have a mask, the virus isn't just going to go away in the next breath. It'll stay stuck in the mask, and then every breath you take, there's more chance that you'll definitely get it I don't think you're, you're understanding oh, okay. the logic behind the mask. <laughs> oh, well, it goes a lot deeper. I mean, it's, of course, symbolic and, and yeah, I mean, obedience and all that. But, I mean, the, the one of the biggest scoops of all this is that HCQ since it cures corona well it cures influenza since corona is just a, a variant of that and all these vaccines against the the flu have been a scam all along and the cure is right there and you see the media hollering oh trump is using it i mean they're india is using it in the uk across the world people are using it but i mean didn't want to go uh, off it so much in that tangent about the jogger isn't it convenient that just when the jogger narrative went oh was jolly jussie smollett right well look now there's a new narrative with a brand new jogger and you know cop on his knee that's very convenient now wait 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 so that's a false flag is what you're saying that's like I'm a, not saying it's necessarily a false flag, but I mean, the assets gonna asset. It's very easy to to have I'm a bad cop over there you and, take and a cop call him and up. you put a black light up to him, he might glow. I'm saying there's, I mean, clowns have shit tons of cops. I mean, on on command. So I mean, if they want some shit to go down, it goes down. I mean, I, I don't know the the last word on it, but I mean, but uh, our our writer. Uh, Oh yes, and also, I mean, last time you went on bear stories, and I didn't get. I had to come in with, with to to chime in with a few. I mean, and I won't go with the the whole stories, but the the main what? thing about bears, what is which they are, which they are a lot smarter than than we know, is that you know, park rangers. There was a park ranger with that had bears. Yeah, that, you see, they, they still with the are picking at bags. You've never seen Yogi they, the they, bear. They, like, they, what the fuck? Like, we already yeah, know they, that. they break in the cars <laughs> and. <laughs> and they would develop different techniques. I mean, bears find out that there are certain types of cars that they would just have to go on top, and then they jump once, mm. and poof, with the all pressure, right. all the windows all blow out, they go all in. Right. All then, right. So one I, ranger... I, go ahead, go ahead. One ranger it. decided to leave her car open, and the bear would go in and sit in the driver's seat and do nothing. It wouldn't look for... It would just <laughs> sit there. And now the big question is, is what the hell was the bear trying to do? Was it figuring know. out what it is to be human or what? But anyway... We I'm still trying to, to figure that out I guess. myself. Yes, ask the questions. <laughs> That's what I was about to tell you to go ahead. Ask those. Yes. Okay, what is your best drug? What? What Nicotine. is your nicotine? Easily. Sir. Also cures coronavirus. And also you can get all the good shit from the hydroxychloroquine by drinking gin and tonic. So if you just smoke cigs and uh, drink gins and tonic, you're 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 safe. Like that's all the you need to do. Recipe for success. Very sweet. Yeah, they okay, figured this uh, out during uh, colonialism when uh, everyone was in uh, India. Yes. All right, go and ahead, caller. Go, go, the, go. Okay. Wh- which Ralph was the worst tonic right about now? <laughs> yes. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead. Okay. Which was the very worst apocalypse? The worst apocalypse? I don't. I don't know what the question means. To be honest, the one that's like, coming this, in about five minutes. Uh, for you. This is this <laughs> is the apocalypse, man. We're living through it. Ah, it's comfy as fuck. Okay, but last question. What uh, and finally, what do you really, but I mean, really do when you sleep? What do I do when I sleep, dude? I'm sleeping, dog. Like, what? What kind of question is that? I astral uh, project to the twelfth dimension. Oh, of the plane oh, of existence. oh, yeah. I talked oh, to I talked like... to DMT elves with Joe Rogan and fucking Elon Gator Musk. Gator nose. Gator I dream nose. of electric sheep. <laughs> Thank you, caller. I appreciate you, man. Have a good one. All right. Dark Butters, go ahead. You're on the kill stream. Good evening, Ralph Gator. Guest, how's it going? Very good. What's up, buddy? I promise no more musical outbursts. I think chat revolted, and I think it's a good thing to end that forever. 
Um, so, author, um, I, you wrote a book about a failed artist who committed suicide. I've never heard that origin story before. Not uh, once. I mean, it's pretty pretty uh, similar, right? You know, I feel like that happens a lot. <laughs> it's uh, pretty indicative of the times. I mean, how many, uh, how many of these uh, posters or whatever all end up killing themselves? I don't know. Suicide I, I know. Stuff. It happens all the time. You do too many furry art pieces, and it's, you just blow your brains out. Yeah, you'll like the book. You should read it. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to check it out. So, so Ralph, this vote by mail shit, man. I, I live in parts of California, and this is this is just bullshit, man. Like they're they're gonna they're gonna defraud everyone like crazy. And we give illegals driver's licenses, and they have to ask to not be registered to vote. And then we have to expect them to say, "Oh, don't worry, we're gonna make sure they're not voting." Right? The same people who gave them driver's licenses, five hundred dollar checks, and other shit. Right? They're the people in charge of checking. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, especially in a state like California. I don't know how comfy I would be with mass mail-in voting, but yeah, Trump's really going to war on this. I, you know what? The it, it's not even about them putting the warning on his tweet today about the one thing about the mail-in voting. It's you know, are they going to do this constantly going forward? There's plenty of Trump statements that are uh, controversial or uh, you know that are considered false by fact checkers or maybe they're on the edge or whatever are they going to do this for all trump tweets now i mean they didn't fact check obama they didn't fact check all these other people to actually put warnings on tweet. i'm not really comfortable uh, with that i didn't like it when facebook did that shit i don't like it now that twitter's doing it i to be quite honest think it's up to the citizenry to to make those types of calls on their own uh, and if the people are too fucking dumb to do that, uh, I don't think it's up to Twitter and Facebook and, and stuff like that to put their big beak and put their big beak on the scale and start uh, influencing things. I don't I'm not comfortable with that. So. It's, uh, it's I think ultimately all of this ties to the use of the t of mental health, right, as a as a way to um, control people, essentially. So like, you know, the basically the motivation here is that like, oh, this is uh, spreading uh, conspiracy theories, which are like for paranoid schizophrenic people and it's going to cause people to do mentally ill people to do bad, bad things and that's uh, the same reasoning behind like gun control and everything like this is a uh, ultimately like where we're headed is uh you're going to be yeah. uh determined your your mental health status by uh the an algorithm which will look through your fucking like internet posts and everything you ever do in your life because you're surveilled all the fucking time and uh you know you'll get a little mental health profile it's like the it's like it's like the chinese system i mean they've already been doing that for a while yeah, I, I could not agree with what you said more. Uh, it's so obvious that we're headed to something like that. Uh, just cradle to the grave surveillance uh, that they know just pretty much every single step you make. All these home devices, uh, if you think those aren't. And then look, they're very convenient. I don't have any myself, but I was, uh, you know, at somebody's place and they're, they're kind of fucking convenient. I'm not going to lie. I mean, you can just talk to them anytime you want. Uh, well, I do have one on my phone. You see, you can't even get rid of them. I was going to say I don't have one, but if I said, okay, Google right now, and then I said, what is the weather? Yeah, that's like the kind of irony of people talking about them like implanting a microchip. See the you already have yeah, that. See, there it is. <laughs> yeah, see, there I, told it is right there. I told you it was going to start talking. Uh, and I didn't even set that up. But yeah, go ahead, uh, Logo. Appreciate it, man. I'm saying like, you know, you already have the fucking microchip on you all the time and everyone loves it. Everyone carries around their phones all yeah. the time. So... <laughs> They're not going to like fucking, I don't know. There's that Bill Gates thing where you had like a cryptocurrency mind with like the uh, effort of your body or whatever. That shit was pretty wild. But, uh, <laughs> what are we headed into? Okay. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be insane. Dark Butters, go ahead. Finish up, man. We're going to get the rest of these callers in. Uh, get some yeah. Mr. Daedalus out of here. Go ahead. I just wish that these like future evil overlords like knew what they were doing and were more competent because like, you know, the mask slips and like, I mean, didn't the U.S. military fund Facebook and whatnot? Like it's yes. there to create your profile. It's there to surveil you. Like that's what it was made for. Well, it's Google genius too. because you willingly that's gave what the it all. internet was made for. Yeah. You willingly yeah, it gave it you all that up. dopamine hit. That's its point. It makes you feel good. You're sharing with your friends. You're saying, hey, how's it going all the time? And then, hey, they just take that data and sell it. But th that's all I got to say. You can sense that. Consumer research, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, all those free apps. And look, I use them as much as it. I mean, everybody uses them. It's not like I can sit here and, you know, tut tut that much about it. Uh, okay, let's see. Where am I? At? I mean, the worst part is that, uh, you know, we're not too far off from the distant future where we're going to be ruled by mega corporations that just control our daily lives. They're already doing it. The that's shitty part true. is we're not going to. Yeah, the shitty part is we're not getting all of the cool like cyberpunk shit with it. 
it's just going to be a dystopian hellhole that's exactly the same as it is today. That's what the whole point of cyberpunk was, though. That's as true. a genre. Like, the idea that, like, people are looking at it, like, oh, man, this is cool now. It's, like, kind of how you, like, aestheticize, like, the conditions of reality as they already are. You're like, oh, like, now it's like I live in Blade Runner. But it's like, <laughs> but it's like yeah, you do. You're a fucking slave. To kind of warm up the water, you mean? Like, the, the lobster's not realizing how hot it is inside the pot, you know? Uh, Look, all I just want you are virtual to, reality uh, waifus, okay? And they can't even do oh, that. Oh, they'll give you one of those, man. Way. They'll give you one of those, and they'll be mining your fucking subconscious for Bitcoin. <laughs> they'll be trying to steal all of my, <laughs> uh, all of my deepest, darkest secrets from my from my you'll hypothalamus. Have, you'll have advertising in your dreams. You'll sleep, and you'll think of nothing but ads. Oh, so, Coca-Cola, yeah, you'll have imagine waifu, them buying so have ad space that. in your dreams. That's totally going to happen, too. I never even thought about that. Till this you'll be moment. sitting there, you know, like riding your motorcycle through, you know, down the highway, you know, hair flowing in the back, hot girl by your side, and she just leans over and whispers into your ear. Now you can get the new Big Mac from McDonald's, only nine. Yeah, yeah you exactly. Know? You're just just like, think about dare. the future where, okay, we, you know, you can get an extra two thousand dollar bonus or some shit. You can get paid, oh, no. but you have to agree this to sell like an hour of your shit. Legends. Yeah, exactly. You have to sell an hour of your dream time every night or some shit like that to fucking you know McDonald's or whatever. Uh, go ahead, Logo. You want to say something? Yeah, I'm saying you're gonna have your virtual waifu, right? But uh, she's gonna be programmed to like get you to consume as much as possible so she's just gonna yeah. manipulate she's gonna be way smarter than you and she's gonna manipulate the fuck out of you until you like buy all the stupid shit and then you're gonna have to like pay for her little skins and things it'll be just like reality <laughs> so what the fuck do you have to look forward to really <laughs> it's not too different from real life Herod, <laughs> so let me put these nightmare goggles on oh no it's exactly the same so Silvatici says Nietzsche is the man we need to answer the Nietzsche question there's a few different ways to pronounce Nietzsche, but that's how I think you said. Uh, Herbert Silva, yeah, it's, been a, it's been a while since I've read any Nietzsche. I remember taking a three-hour philosophy course in college, and it was on Saturday mornings, once a week, nine to twelve a.m. I don't, or you know, nine a.m. to noon. I still don't know why I signed up for a three-hour philosophy class on a Saturday morning. I know, chat. You wouldn't be shocked to learn that I had some long Friday nights, and it wasn't always the best time to read Nietzsche and really get deep into thought, but I still did it nonetheless. What is your answer on the Nietzsche question, Logo? Uh, Nietzsche is really good. Yeah, he's like very important philosopher, really good shit. Um, don't just read the top stuff. Just like you got to read all of it. If you're going to read Nietzsche, you got to start at the beginning and you got to read it to the end. And what one of the most underrated books I would say by him is called Anti-Education. Is the first thing he wrote. Um, they just republished it pretty recently in a pretty nice copy. I think that's the... Uh, New York Review of Books put it out. Um, it's a really solid book. Um, and uh, it kind of shows where he's influenced by Max Stirner more so than his later works. Um, but yeah, Nietzsche's great. You got to read it all, though. Don't don't be a little pussy and read on one, one of them. <laughs> you got to read all of them. Aaron Sovatici says, all Trump has to do is go to Gab, et cetera, plus Twitter, and then Twitter's over. I don't believe that. And I saw some people saying that on Oh, that's never going to happen. That's not going to look. That's like the most original shit I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah. Because Trump that, going on Gab. <laughs> that's not where all the media is. That's why do you think he's on Twitter? Why am I on Twitter? Why the fuck is anybody there? Because that's where everybody else is. That's how you get in the conversation. Um, now, I do agree it would be a huge boon for Gab, and, you know, it would definitely help their website out. It might give them a surge and make them, you know, you know, decent competitor. Not even really on scale with Twitter, but it would give them a much bigger user base. But right up still, until their website gets shut down. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't. It would be it would be a big move, don't get me wrong, but it wouldn't shut out Twitter. Uh, Russell Limbaugh Groyper says, uh, great Tucker clip uh, and suggest stories. Yeah, we actually had the same clip, and we're definitely going to play that in just a moment, actually. Dumpster Jassy says, Ralph wears the mask only near Bibble. Cold Still the Hedgehog says, I, Ethan Ralph, believe Corona is a fake government scam. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I don't believe that, but thank you. Herbert Silvatici says, nice Blade Runner reference, Ralph. You're wasted here. Yes, the electric sheep. Thank you. Uh, well, it's a Philip Dick reference. But anyway, uh, Cooper says Hendrix Ice H20 and two limes. Or H2O, H20. <laughs> H2O and two limes. <laughs> H20. Well, that's a new fucking designer bath salt that we're going to talk about with John McAfee. H20. So, uh, you know, you're a fan not, of uh... 
Yo, it's hold not up, hold in up. the H2O formation. He didn't put it on there correctly, Gator. It just says H. It literally says H20. It's not the H2O. <laughs> let's let, let's talk about some good shit. Let's talk about some important shit, right? So you like Philip K. Dick? I mean, I'm not a super fan. I was just dropping the the reference. Uh, okay, there. okay. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. No, I was gonna say, don't your, grill me. <laughs> no, for your for your waifu friend over here who wants to have a virtual waifu, I'd recommend reading the Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch because that is what you have to look forward to. Yeah, so do androids dream of electric sheep was what I was referencing. Also, man in the high castle. Yeah. I think that's. Uh, I think that's. Yeah, that's another dick book. That's, that's a good too, one. Right? Yeah. Um, also, the series. Oh, they really fucked up the series after like the second or third season. But okay, uh, was it the? I think it's the third season where they do the whole. Uh, anyway, I won't go into it. Of course, that's an adaptation. Read the book itself. Uh, let's see. McFurious says, Big Tech is full of commies. Uh, it's uh, probably hard to disagree with, at least on the lower levels. Shinchan 256 b says, Fuck phones. I'm going back to carrier pigeons. Edward Silvatici says, The NQ, Nietzsche question, is God. Wait, the is God is dead. So what replaces God? Uh, I guess you can answer that if you'd like, sir. Personally, I mean, I don't think Nietzsche's like, you know, he's uh, he's announcing it a little bit early there, right? He's more saying it's, it's like dead for uh, civil society, right? But uh, if you read the book, The Antichrist, which I think is one of his uh, best books, um, you'll find a more nuanced uh, take on it than you'd find in Zarathustra, which is where you're getting that from. But it's also further, uh, that's not even a Nietzsche quote. The person who said that first was Hegel. So maybe you should read that. Oh, it's been a while since I read Hegel, but uh, re uh, let's see if I can do this name right. Over on entropystream.live slash the Ralph Retort, Rep Reprit Fetchlands says, have you seen the Trump campaign truth over facts video? Also, Valsh got fucked by actual justice warrior earlier. I didn't see any of those, actually. But thank you for that, and I will... Oh, I see it now, though. Well, I guess we'll have to play the truth over facts. I didn't see what happened with Valsh. Uh, an actual justice warrior. I'll try to look into that. See, that's a little bit harder to pull up uh, while I'm on the air, but uh, I will look into that. But what I'll do first uh, is look at these colors. I think there's a couple more. I was about to, I was about to see you farewell, but I think a couple of people want to talk to you real quick. Uh, go ahead. Walrus real quick. Hey there, everybody from the great American house, but that is a max excess Americanus. Hey, Ralph Gator and Mr. Daedalus. What's up? I just, uh, a quick little bit, uh, with this Memorial Day weekend, the New York Times took the opportunity to label every single Confederate veteran who ever fought for the Confederate States of America a traitor. So I wanted to ask each of you, right quick, a sort of a roundtable question, who is your favorite Confederate traitor? Um, Robert E. Lee, but Stonewall Jackson right there next to him. Uh, Judah Benjamin. Shit, I was gonna pick Stonewall Jackson, and Ralph took it. Well, I mean, you can still pick Stonewall. I, if I'm if I'm forced to choose, I'm picking Robert E. Lee. I mean, come on, but Stonewall Don't Jackson. Google, no. Do not Google Judah P. Benjamin. Don't Google that. <laughs> 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 Don't think about it. Robert E. Lee, the absolute legend. I mean, you know, Southern Caesar, basically. I mean, come on, I can't. Yeah, but what about the Secretary of That's State, guys? Come on. I don't know. We'll leave that there. All right. <laughs> what well, about you? All I was gonna, all, what I was gonna say for my favorite Confederate traitor was uh, John Wilkes Booth because uh, Lincoln was a tyrant and tyrants get the ball. Oh, and on that, that, Ralph, glory, 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 baby, the Union march is on. I have to disavow that. Fuck the there. Union! Hurrah for the Bonnie Blue flag that bears a single star, my friend. Ducks to lose. I'm in. I'm in Texas, baby. But guess what? Sam Houston, not exactly a Confederate. No, he was explicitly not a Confederate. No, right. yeah, they had, to, they had to kick him out of office. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To the it's just to see from the union. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Walrus. Appreciate it, man. I appreciate it too, dude. Have a good night. You too, man. You too, bud. All right. Let's see. Winston Fujimori, quick lightning round, so we can get through them all with the guest. Hey, sorry, I'm uh, kind of late to the party. I didn't know who um who uh what's his name uh Daedalus Logo was. Daedalus selfie Logo. suicide. All right. I was reading the reviews of his book. It sounds great. I'm gonna have to pick it up. Um, one thing though, uh, the character he basically lives in like a um, Blade Runner kind of hellscape where it's uh, post-capitalist, it's all decaying and, wh and whatnot. I want to know why does a character choose to ki to kill himself versus do something like and hear me out, 
versus do something like commit a terrorist act against his society. Because I'm sure your uh, guest is uh, a big fan of Julius Evola. And in his book, Revolt Against the Modern World, he has this section on why terrorist attacks and mass shootings happen. And it uh, has to do with the lack of cohesion in society and a lack of function. And it creates dysfunction for individuals. And they choose to act out in their um, uh, discontent extreme discontent by doing something so crazy and surreal and unpleasant that all the onlookers all right, and all caller, the what, well, yeah. now look we have to just i, I get what, what you're, you're going for it. i got what you're going for i, here, know, so, I mean i'm hopeful i'm just, I'm just saying i'm just I saying know, I, intellectual I, I, commentary i understand i understand but yeah go yeah, ahead yeah yeah, yeah. All right, I, I get what you're saying man um yeah i would say like you know look at uh if you look at like julius evola he's he's all right i'm not like, a huge fan uh, i definitely read him when i was younger but um i don't know kind of moved on beyond that but uh if you look at his his origins right he was a dadaist right so he was uh he was uh working in like surrealist art but if you read the surrealist manifesto andre breton describes like essentially terrorism as being a uh a uh, an artwork right he said the most surreal act would be to walk down the street and just start shooting people for no reason so this is like all kind of predicted at that time like that sort of more uh, spectacular version of like terrorism as opposed to like the more political kind and it, in my book it's like it's not really political it's more like pathetic it's more it's not like the character's not really like um couldn't even uh, come up with doing something like that he's he doesn't have like an attachment to like sort of political ideology he's just like entirely alienated i i might actually i might like write something more like dostoevsky and with like a kind of political terrorist angle at some point but that's not really what i was thinking about at the time i was thinking more about like just you know the kind of invisible uh the kind of like invisible like random like deviant art poster or something yeah yeah i got you i'm uh, not a political bent more of just a you know a bent because of what he's more psychological. His life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What, yeah, okay. Uh, Southern Nico, quickly. Hey, what's up, Ralph? What's up? Go ahead. All right. I was just going to uh, give some calming advice to the white people out there about this shooting, if that's all right. The cop needs no, to No, wait a minute. Them. Dingo, look, I don't what? know. I don't, don't, what do you mean, calming you always, advice? You always do this. I've never given, I've never done anything bad on air. <laughs> all right. I'm a good boy. All right. Well, anyway. what, is, what is it you want to say? Don't... Go ahead. All right. Sit, sit, sit back and have your mind blown, Ralph, but you got to stop interrupting the dingo. So first off, right. like pe people's people's first instinct, if your first instinct is to defend the cop, right, because like we all know what most of these cases are like, right, and and we know that. Well, but a just, lot of times it's this, just, this you one... know, yeah, and that's what I was talking about earlier. That's why, you you know, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, th this one's pretty – it's hard to imagine for me. It's hard to imagine a case where, like, what happened was justified it's just not like the guy clearly knew nothing about how the human body works and you know constricting the carotid artery that way but uh yeah that's not a good idea okay yeah, yeah it's, it's really not like the entire weight of the guy's body was being born you know uh by the guy's neck uh, yeah he's gonna die and but i just want to say don't defend the cop just despite the you know the the other the other group right but uh mm -hmm. the main point i'd like people to take away from this like look at look at the protesting instantly i mean hours after this happens instantly right uh if white white people can't even be bothered to talk about like uh the things happening to white people in white countries at thanksgiving right you're not supposed to talk about politics if, if we could just like care a tenth as much as blacks do about the, our own people our problems would be solved and you're, you're not gonna hear me say this often but i really do admire like blacks for that instant reaction they have to protect their own and we could really learn something from that ralph was that was that all right that's not a bad point actually i gotta say i'm proud of you dingo you read some all malcolm right, x no dude i'm not gonna read malcolm x why it's good he you was, like it. You were he just was agreeing with what you said i was just saying you're just seriously. saying like yeah. that you, would, you would appreciate that shit and now you're fucking yeah, I, like no i, I wouldn't I read that i don't need to i don't yeah, need to read malcolm x that <laughs> hey, I, I, I go, wait, he, was, he was agreeing with you i was just saying you would enjoy way. it no oh, it's okay, not okay, saying actually. read malcolm x and uh, you know apply it to anyway yeah, let me let me get some Malcolm X. I'll just go ahead and read MLK. Dingo, Junior you don't have that. to agree with Malcolm they X to read him. They weren't even close to the same. You don't know what you're talking about, dude. You read I, the hey, autobiography. Hey, nobody, of nobody knows those people more than I do. Don't tell me that. You, you haven't even me. read his fucking me. autobiography. No, I haven't. Saying, you know I'm not gonna. Okay, so you don't know anything about it. You don't know anything. Okay, Mr. Fucking, I've been dropping the name of every ph ph uh, philosopher I've read. Nobody's impressed, dude. Nobody. It's Malcolm X. It's an important historical. It's Malcolm figure. X. 
All right, Dingo. buddy. Dingo. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh, man, this is fun. Now I'm having fun. <laughs> he blew it. He was so mild mannered and so well behaved. And then nah, you... I could tell there was a little. He was he was simmering under there. I could tell. But you were agreeing with him. At least that's I know. How I that's the it. irony, right? That's the irony of it all, right? I was like, that's you what really I, think, ask. I was like, you really oh. think that's true? Maybe you should read what they fucking wrote. Marcus Garvey, for instance, all these people talk about all this shit. Marcus Garvey said that he invented fascism. Uh, have any of these fucking people read Marcus Garvey? Of course not. I'm just anyway. I'll, okay, I see Fash out in the in the Lino chat, uh, and he says guest has more lame references than Dennis Miller. Okay, here we go. By the way, I'm it's fine not, with that, man. I'll take that. I'm not saying it's not. Look, is it bad to quote to? I don't know. It's not bad to be smart. I don't think, but some people do. All right, it, is, a, it is these days. It can be <laughs> criminal. <laughs> they want you to sound like an idiot. All right, let's uh, let's bring in the last two, well, two callers. Yes, Wonder C, go ahead, real quick. Oh, hey, how's it going? Um, really great to get hey, on with you. Up? I really appreciate the the show. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you. Um, one thing that I wanted to say was I hate this defeatist attitude with people saying, "Oh, I've got this smart device in my house. I've got an Alexa. Oh, it doesn't matter. I've got an Android phone. It's like a, a, a like Amazon spying on me or Google spying on me." Check out EOS. It's a security-based operating system. It's easy to get on your phone. You don't have to worry about setting your, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about Google spying on you or Amazon, you know, tapping your phone and all that stuff. Um, it really doesn't take a lot to secure yourself. Uh, with Caller, your have you heard of Urbit? I have not. Okay, you should just go look that up. All right. There we go. A couple tips. I'm going to actually just pull that up myself. Uh, okay. <laughs> go ahead. You got anything else? Wonder C? Uh, nope. That, that's about it, man. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the show. Yeah, Thank no, there's sure. definitely hope, dude. There's definitely hope in regards to like the possibility of creating like a different technological infrastructure. The bigger problem is like um, just like the kind of economy of scale of it, right? Because if everyone else is on this thing and you're not, it's kind of like you're just like off the grid and then you kind of just like don't exist. So it's like, yeah, you could be on Gab, but it doesn't fucking matter if you're on Gab. No one goes on Gab. Like you could be on one of these like alternative things, but as soon as a media platform hits like a certain critical mass, like you have to be on it or else you don't exist. Like, you know, if you don't have a Facebook, all the people who are just your Facebook friends, like they forget that you exist. Like, it's not like, like, yeah, you can like secure oh, yourself, true. et cetera, et cetera. Way, I but you're posting. also like disappearing yeah. from just society. For, people, you know, and I'm almost exclusively Twitter. I think you mentioned that earlier for yourself. Uh, but I still have, you know, I used to be on Facebook, you know, the social media when I first got on it, like most people, of course, MySpace and stuff like that. But when I really got into it was Facebook, like most. Uh, and I was on there all the time. A lot of people I grew up with, went to college with. And then I just kind of stopped posting on Facebook. They kind of forget you're around. Uh, you know, you used to post a lot of your articles and stuff to yeah, Facebook. Yeah, and I, I just, can remember that. I just don't use Facebook much anymore. It's like, oh wow, wow, he's still here. Uh, and so yeah, I don't know. All right, cocaine, butane. I'm not sure what else I was gonna add to that. Cocaine, butane, and Rogaine. Last caller. Go ahead. Good evening, you... gentlemen. Uh, just in the vein of like cryptocurrency, one thing that I found interesting that maybe you guys are aware of. Or... On the 18th of June in 1996, the National Security Agency Office of Information Security and Research Technology published a paper named How to Make a Mint, the Cryptography of Anonymous Electronic Years later, in 2008, Bitcoin was developed by someone who used a pseudonym named Satoshi Nakamoto. He has never claimed his Bitcoin in the blockchain, and at one point it was worth billions. Right. You know, I was involved in the Canadian Bitcoin exchange, and I realized from the like, inception that eventually decentralized cryptos would be banned, and then we're just enslaved. There's no more blue collar side jobs on the weekends for a few hundred bucks so you can pay your bills. It's complete enslavement. No more taxless transactions. And I recognize this from the start. And to see that in the COVID stimulus bill, they have, uh, you know, one of these rider pieces of legislation for a digital. It's fucking, it's, you know, it's preposterous. And uh, I, I just, it, I kind of feel embarrassed that I was uh, kind of a cryptocurrency evangelist advocating for it as if it would be something in the vein. You know, because how easy is it for them to ban decentrals? And then we're anyways. But thank you, man. Yeah, that's fair. I'm glad you got in. You were clipping a little bit, but I think everybody was able to hear most of that. Um, thank you, sir. I appreciate you waiting and getting in. Cheers. Thank you. Have a good. You too.
Again, I'm not a crypto expert. I did, man, I wish if I would have just saved. I, I do remember buying Bitcoin at 250 Of course, that all went Dude, up. I remember when it was less than a dollar. <sighs> oh. I like want to die sometimes. Oh, dude. And I spent all that shit uh, up in smoke, so to speak, like the old Cheech and Chong movie. I'll leave it there. But yeah. Oh, so, it was you ever, fun. you ever, uh, you ever uh, go back? I, I used to talk to people who would buy stuff on like the Silk Road or whatever, and they'd be like, retroactively, if like you hadn't bought that, like I how have, much would it have cost? I've considered. Now? I mean, I can't confirm or deny using a Silk Road or anything like that. Gotcha. But, uh, but, but uh, hypothetically, hypothetically, had I used services like that, and had I spent thousands of dollars in Bitcoin, uh, and had I actually saved that Bitcoin, yeah, I would be a, a, be a millionaire, be a, probably be a millionaire. Yeah, no doubt, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even at the price now, much less if I'd had it when it was that 20 K or whatever, but even at the price now, yeah, it probably would be, Oh, well, I try not to think about it too much, but what I do like to think about is your appearance tonight on the kill stream logo, Daedalus author of selfie suicide, sir, tell them where they can find you and uh, say your farewells. Yeah. So my name's logo Daedalus logo underscore Daedalus, which is D A E D A L U S. And, uh, you can find my book called selfie suicide on Amazon. Uh, I also show up on compost CAG podcast, the, uh, pseudo doxological podcast network quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, we've got some big things coming there and, um, you'll I'm sure you'll hear more about it when compost on later this week. Very good, sir. Thank you so much for debuting tonight on the kill stream. You have a good one. For sure. Thanks for having me guys. All right. Peace. That was a good one. I see Bo Blacks is here. Now, let me see how long that Tucker video is. Uh, maybe we'll play that. How long is it, Gator? It's a terribly long. It's a, it's a fairly short segment. Uh, okay. You know what? I'll play that as, as a little intermission before we bring Bo Blacks on and go into some of the drama. And we have a few other stories like Jimmy Fallon, too. Uh, so just okay. to kind of set this clip up, um, a, lot of, a bunch of college Republicans in America First student organizations sent a letter to President Trump uh, telling him that he needs to expand his immigration ban. So remember, we covered this on the kill stream a few weeks back that Trump passed an executive order, but he left out some of the most crucial, crucial things like H-1Bs and, and other uh, visa applications that made them exempt. This letter from all of these different uh, college Republican and America First student organizations asks Trump to expand the ban. By the way, what are the chances <laughs> I'm spitting at Bo Blacks on right now? What are the chances the Yo Mama guy is watching right now? <laughs> By the way, shout out to uh, RFC After Hours over on Twitch because uh, they got fucked over on YouTube, but they're doing great on Twitch, Bo Blacks, and of course, Augie. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the Yo Mama guy is actually going to be on there tomorrow. And I'll be yeah, watching Yeah, that's going to be a fucking loser. That's going to be a very... In that's going to be an interesting one. I wonder, I wonder what excuses he's going to make for uh, being a liar. Using Maddox a as a source. Yeah, being a complete fucking fraud. Yeah, I wonder what kind of excuses. I love that Augie booked that, by the way, because that would be exactly what I would try to do, too. And, and, you know, obviously, I wouldn't try it in this case because I know he's not going to show up. But if I was him, that would be exactly what I would try to do. Uh, so congratulations on that and shout out to them. I think it should start about 7 or so, 7 p.m. Eastern, usually, right? I think it's Usually 7. around there, yeah. Uh, so right before the kill stream, uh, let's see. Fash out says guest is generic pseudo intellectual Libby art fig. Fash out. Not a fan of the guests. I have to say, I like, I like having guests like that on sometimes kind of, uh, stretches, you know, it's good to have, you're supposed to have authors and we had a comedian last week. That's a talk show. That's what you do on a talk show, Gator. Exactly. Yeah, Authors, a little bit of, little bit of politicians, everything. you know, we brought people in running for office, internet personalities. Uh, eventually, I, I do kind of want to do this. And I was thinking about this before I play the video and waste, you know, more time. I'm sorry. Uh, is actually having um, musical guests, too. But we haven't I haven't got that set up. But that is something. That well, I we did have do. a musical guest. We had uh, we had That's a true. shooter on. That's true. Uh, but, you know, more formalized musical guests. Uh, actually was, playing a song on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, uh, actually, or singing, you know. Yeah, I've thought, I've thought about that. Al Tabeev says, Houston would be a Confederate town now. If, wait, would be a Confederate now if he saw the sloppy job the feds are doing on the border today. Al Tabeev with the Ninja Guinea. Thank you so much. All right, let's play the video. It's the stream bowl. You ready? And then we got blowbacks right after. All right, let me pull it up. And I'm only playing this so I don't put him on the spot and make him a much political shit while he's... <laughs> 
<laughs> well, yeah, he's not, way much of a political yeah, guy. We might have to do a story or two that's a little political, but I didn't want to put him on the spot with Tucker Carlson. Bo Black, Bo Blacks, can you weigh in on the Tucker Carlson video? No, that's <laughs> not why he's here. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's hit it right now. Well, America's newly graduated college seniors are in trouble. If you know one, you're aware of this. They have an average debt load of almost $30,000. And they'll be competing in the job market they're about to enter with 40 million Americans who just lost their jobs. So the situation for young Americans is dire, maybe the most dire in our lifetimes. That's why 30 U.S. college student organizations just sent a letter to the President of the United States with a simple suggestion for how to help them. Put a pause on companies that are importing foreign workers to take jobs that they might have. The letter proposes canceling hundreds of thousands of H-1B and OPT visas. These are the visas allowing foreign workers to take jobs that could be given to new American college graduates. It's a simple idea. Oliver Kravarik is president of the San Diego State College Republicans. His group signed the letter. We're happy to have him on site. Oliver, thanks so much for coming on. Let me just say how sorry I am for you and people in your class entering into a job market like this. It's, it's really tough. Um, so explain what you think this letter will achieve and why it could help you. So this letter is coming at a very strategic time in the administration. Uh, just about a month ago, I think almost to the day, the president announced an executive order um, essentially banning immigration across the board. But then the very right. next day, I and many other graduates were dismayed to see that some of the most egregious foreign worker visas were excluded from this immigration ban. So essentially right. it's just giving a signal to the administration, letting them know that there is an appetite, especially among young likely voters, um, to take care of the egregious H-1B and OPT abuse that's displacing American graduates and professionals across the board. And, and, we, and that's exactly right. We should be clear, these are not, these are not strawberry picking jobs. These are not farm jobs. I mean, these are, a lot of these are white collar <laughs> jobs. Picking. And you can imagine exactly who in the administration was for keeping these visas in place and who you know, oh, took the yeah. call from I Tim Cook imagine. over at Apple to keep them in place. Mm. So do you think that you can make the difference by appealing directly to the president? I think given the nature of the time period that this is coming in at, um, the president is expected to announce new measures on the immigration ban, I think, in the, in the coming week even. So hopefully the timing of this is not lost on the administration, uh, the, the very strategic timing that this letter is coming at. Well, how do you, so you are in this position, you're a college student, you'll be entering at some point the job market, say a prayer. How do you feel personally about the fact that the U.S. government is allowing white-collar jobs that you could take to begin your life to go to foreign nationals? Personally, I find it unconscionable, especially since it was an essential foreign policy, or rather domestic policy prescription uh, from the president, even during his time as a candidate back in 2015 totally. and 2016. So American patriots going back to the 1990s, even further on, have repeatedly sounded the alarm on, on the guest worker abuse that's displacing American workers. So it's, it's puzzling to see almost four years into an administration that this is sort of an, an area where action has not been taken decisively. No, and because the president, who I think is in favor of stopping these visas, was talked out of it by, again, you can imagine. But let me just finally ask you, do you feel like you've been duped a little bit? I mean, here you go to college, you assume all this debt, you study, and you get out and you find that they're giving away jobs to college graduates from other countries. No, of course, and especially given the gross... Uh, tuition paid by international students and things like that. There is absolutely a conflict of interest when it comes to American universities yeah. selling out their own graduates. Yes. Um, yes. And this is this is really just an issue across the board for American politics. What's best for the market? What's best for the GDP? Is not necessarily always what's yes. best for the American worker or the American Thank college you. graduate. It. it seems like there is an incredible lack of of incision on this issue. I think you're exactly right. And, and the higher too. education lobby is a driving force behind this atrocity, and they should be called out. I'm glad that you did. Oliver, this thanks so much ace. for coming on tonight. Thank you so much, Tucker. It's an honor. That's, you know what? That was awesome. And I saw Fuentes commenting about uh, Oliver's appearance there. 
Uh, and I hadn't seen it until just right now. He killed it. I got to say, Fuentes Absolutely. was dead. Fuentes, 100% right. You know, I already assumed, you know, he knew what he was talking about. But I hadn't seen the clip until just now. Yeah, uh, he deserves all the adulation and plaudits available. Uh, real quick commentary from that, Gator. I'll read these super chats. I'll bring Bobax on, and we'll get knee-deep in the gutter. Man, there's really nothing more that needs to be said. He absolutely nailed it spot on. And I loved Tucker. Uh, you know, he's very careful. Tucker's very careful not to mention who in the administration is yeah. holding this up. But, uh, you know, everybody that's listening to this clip knows exactly who he's referring to. I wonder to. who that could be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cheesehead69 says, read my stream element, bro. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Stream elements. I think I did miss a couple of those. Uh, there's also an entropy. Uh, Pensive Cowboy says, I know a crackhead that thinks he invented the cell phone. Doesn't make it so. And if guests had actually read Marcus Garvey, he would know this. Dingo triumphant. Fuck this person. And he mentions eating something that I won't say what he said to eat. But uh, I've said that, that before on air. If you want to go back and learn your history, I guess. Now, also, there was a link. Uh, what was that? Uh, I see. Hold on. Uh, I think that's the the link that I posted already. Yeah, it's the it's the truth over facts video. Now, we will play that, but we got to get into the into the mobile X segment. Uh, but we will play that before the show's over. I guarantee, just if you don't see it, just hang tight. I promise it will be coming. Uh, stream Elements. Uh, let's see. Osir says, none of this is going to be good for Klein's. I think this is from today. Yeah. None of this is going to be good for Klein's reputation. Keem may have made the community figure out that even though he's a huge asshole, Klein's an even bigger one. Yeah, we're about to get right into that. Cheesehead69 says, Nick said he's down to do a blood sports to address Destiny's claim that he wants to exterminate all non whites also Valsh's girlfriend looks like a can of busted biscuits so nick actually said that huh well as you know uh destiny's been on the show many times and uh i, I see no reason why he wouldn't do it again um so if i don't know we'll see I, I'm, I'm speaking for him so i can't say i know they have a little animosity um but yeah i would love to host that obviously that would be great and that would be the best thing too, because I wouldn't. I would pretty much know Destiny would be there, and I wouldn't have to fuck around. Uh, okay, technocratic plumber says, "Logo, are you beefing with the perfume nationalist?" Oh wow, I missed this. I'll ask him. You know what? I'll ask him this personally. Are you beefing with the perfume nationalist? What are your thoughts on him? Also, Ralph TPN may be an interesting guest. I'm sorry I missed that technocratic. Oh, that makes me feel bad. Oh, I missed it, Gator. You did. You were you were caught up on. Uh... <laughs> the nature of German idealism. <laughs> oh my God. Let's see. I'll, I'll send that to him. I was supposed to ask you this. <laughs> okay. I'll see if I can get an answer for you. I'm going the extra mile, you know, cause I felt bad. So I'm going to go ahead and go the extra mile. We'll see if I can get that answer for you. Uh, also there's another stream elements. Uh, let's see. Birds are fuzzy. fuzzy says, speaking of Philip K. Dick, did you know Alex Jones has a cameo in the film adaptation of a scanner darkly? Scanner I darkly. D- yes. Yes. Not. It's fantastic. I did not I'll know see if that. I can find the clip. But yeah. you know what I did know? I know that Bo Blacks is here with us live and in living color. Well, living audio, at least. Uh, Bo Blacks, Yo, how's it going, uh, sir? Pretty good. I so much you- drama going on. Well, uh, actually, pretty bad for the future of YouTube, considering that Gokunaru video re-uploaded by Team went down. Now, I talked about a little bit earlier. I would say this is much more your superstar beat here that you cover on the daily. You know, honestly, if it wasn't Keem, we we might not even be covering this. You know, we kind of just, like, the biggest dramas we'll cover, and then since this one's Keem, it's like, well, of course we have to cover it. He's, yeah, he's I mean, a- any drama Keem's in is typically the biggest drama. <laughs> <considering> <laughs> <his class. laughs> I know, I don't right, even that's fair. But we get into so we got into Susie Lou. There's certain stuff that we cover that you guys cover. It's kind of a little bit of yeah. bleed over, but not everything. Some you know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah, some of the stuff. Caterino, we dipped in a little bit, but not too much. It's like, all right. Uh, apparently, according so to some funny. people, all you cover is politics, and if I come on the show, I'm automatically <laughs> a Nazi. So, you know, well, there's no, there's no, that there's is no a, dual topics. You only uh, have, to, you only talk about Nazi propaganda. That's it. You know what's funny is the last week of shows have been I don't know at least fifty percent or more of this story. <laughs> so um, yeah, you know, um, it just depends on what's hot. Now today it's Keem. Now tell us what happened. I talked about it a little bit earlier in the show, but 
Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I'm guessing you've been covering it. Keem and Ethan have been going back and forth, bickering True. about who's the worst guy. They're both kind of bad in a lot of ways, although I prefer Keem Star, personally. But um, basically, what happened is there's a video that was uploaded by a YouTuber called Gokunaru that was uploaded back in 2018, and it was like over an hour long, and it was really the first video that made people dislike Ethan. Ethan's reputation was like crystal clean, up until that point, and he just uh, compiled a bunch of stuff from the podcast and just said, here are all of Ethan's bad tendencies. So a year ago, uh, Susan Wojcicki, the CEO of YouTube, went out to a bunch of these creators to talk about creator-on-creator harassment, specifically alongside a bunch of other YouTube issues. One of the people they reached out to was H3. And coincidentally, once those, uh, you know, after that meeting happened a couple months later, they implemented the harassment changes and a bunch of videos went down across all of YouTube, mostly big videos like uh, the Leafy Content Cop, a video by Psychic Pebbles, like a million sub YouTubers, basically. But there was one video that stood out in terms of uh, being removed, which was Gokunaru's video, because Gokunaru only had about like 100k subs at the time. Uh, he really got big off of that video in particular, the H3 one. Uh, and that video got removed, which was very strange considering that only really big videos that kind of went against the, these arbitrary guidelines that, you know, aren't really enforced consistently uh, went down. So, so it kind of stuck out a little bit out of all the videos they took down. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. A and, a lot of, yeah. and a lot of people were theorizing that Ethan, his meeting with Susan had something to do with that video being taken down. Now fast forward all the way to now where Keemstar re-uploaded that video to get back at H3. And Which the was, video, can we by comment, the way, can we comment on that really yeah. quick? That's hilarious, yeah. right? That he did that. I mean, I have to I like when I saw that he did that, I bust out laughing because I just thought that's fucking I I didn't even see that's where he was going because yesterday or day before he said, I'm gonna upload the video you don't want him to see or whatever. And for some reason I didn't even <laughs> think of this video. But it was pretty obvious that he was gonna do this, but I just didn't see it. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. H3 really really wants this video hidden. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sitting yeah, there thinking, he, what is it? Ethan Klein's still gonna dick or something? Like, what is he yeah, about to upload? It, 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 bothered him so much that Ethan even responded to the Gokunara video on his podcast, but he never mentioned his name or anything. He was just like, <laughs> I'm just re responding to some criticism I've been seeing here and there in the comments, but it was clearly all of his <laughs> points, point by point. And you could even see him type Gokunaru like on the screen for a split <laughs> second on his, <laughs> on his computer, even though he never mentioned it. So it was pretty clear that, that uh, Ethan had something to do with that video being taken down. Uh, so Keemstar uploads this video today, and whenever Keems during this whole week, uh, I'm sure you've noticed, whenever Keemstar uh, throws a shot or Ethan throws a shot, there's almost an immediate response. I recall with yeah. Keemstar's second response video, Keemstar responded to, or Ethan responded to Keemstar on Twitter before the video was even out for like 10 minutes. It was, it's like very fast replies. Today, no response to the re-upload, right? Then a couple I hours later, that. he gets taken down. So oh. what was Ethan doing that whole time? Calling up, you know, Susan? Dude, he was responding to Keem so quick. And to be fair, Keem was responding to him back pretty quick, too. Um, and, you know, we're all on Twitter all day. I mean, most, you know, me and you and Keem and him. Yeah. They're, they're clearly on Twitter all the time, like like we are. But, I mean, just the absolute quickness with, with the response, I think Klein's got even, you know, the notification button on for Keem's tweets, you know what I mean? Like, that, yeah, that's sure. how that's how quick he was responding. I was thinking, He's like wow, one of those kinda... Trump reply guys. Yeah. It's like always, like, right there. And just immediately <laughs> back. Um, also, the, the it's, is it long for Internet Beef? I'm sitting here trying to think. I was thinking about this earlier. That uh, I guess Ethan put out three videos, and this is Keem's, I mean, not his third technically but his third upload or whatever um i don't know that that's out of the ordinary are, are we are we just uh, i feel like the frequency, think it should be over yeah go ahead the frequency of content is definitely more than typical but that length at of least time in this isn't. short amount oh, okay okay yeah yeah, yeah so it's time. been about yeah, a yeah, week yeah. which is kind of normal for dramas but there's been like a lot of videos and usually these people take like weeks to make the response video or whatever clearly <laughs> Why is it so Ethan quick? had something to plan yeah i was gonna say is that what it is that he's been playing yeah I, I believe for the second video it was very clear that a lot of it was done before the first video even came out and then he just like spliced in like certain responses uh the third video was made completely from scratch i believe and that which shows it was the worst one uh 
I don't know if you guys have already reacted to the third. We showed the, the third with the nuclear winner. Or... Yeah, yeah, the one where it, with we the Tony stuff. The and, we had to uh, turn it off because it keeps... Tag. Look, I'm just going to be real. I, yeah, honestly, we turned it off before the gamer tag. He was still talking about the old man, and I'm just like, look, I don't give a fuck. Like, shut yeah. up. Like, okay, old man, we get it. You know, you had a rough time on the yeah. internet. Guess what? I've had a fucking rough time on the internet, too. You know, shut the fuck up. You know, I, I hate to hear it. You know, it sucks, but... You look like you're doing yeah. all right. You look like you're doing all right. You know what I mean? Yeah, is that, is that, is I don't think anyone's calling. Yeah, I don't yeah. think anyone's calling the old man a pedo because everybody knows about this guy through Keemstar fucking up the story. So no one legitimately <laughs> thinks yeah. that this guy's a pedo because Keem deleted the story two hours after it was uploaded and apologized two hours after it was uploaded. So there was only a two-hour span where Tony could have been viewed as a pedophile, which is still really bad. I mean, it Keemstar, sucks. Yeah, but, don't get me wrong. But <laughs> like all these years later, you Tony, you cannot be being called a pedophile by by anyone except for like little edge lord boys on the internet. Yeah, it's like, like all right, people were in your mentions, <laughs> fucking with you. Or you had some mean comments. Guess what? It's happened to a lot of us, sir. And I, you know, understand yeah. it was on a large scale and this and that. But yeah, look, I feel like a lot of these people are just used as scapegoats at this point. Like, oh, yeah. Keem fucked up on this. Let's throw Tony back at him. Let's throw this person at him and this person at him. When all these issues that cr cropped up with Keemstar are relatively resolved or very old. I mean, he went through like, dude, I don't know, Klein like brought half up a, a fucking, decade of history. <laughs> dude, Klein brought up a fucking issue from 2012 last night. I, I have to pull this up. Yeah. It's, it's seriously it's a Keemstar fuck. tweet from 2012. Before, I mean, I was on the internet, obviously, but I wasn't, you know, involved in any of this. I'm sitting here thinking 2012. What the fuck was yeah, I exactly. saying in 2012? I mean, that's going... Yeah. Way the fuck back, and I realize Keemstar, you know, has a bigger footprint as a as a personality or whatever than I do. But still, this is let's talk about this actually, I mean, because the tweet that he pulled up is the the Woody Collin dog issue is still up, and then he, then he says just reporting. And uh, by the way, Frank Castle might call in at some point this week. He screenshotted it. it's a whole array of screenshots that Ethan Klein tweeted out, and it's about this kid jerking off a dog. And uh, so the one Frank Hassel seized it on was he's been a guest here on the show. Shout out to Frank Hassel. He quotes Keem and it says he jacked off a dog in front of thousands of people. It's news. Be mad at the parents, not me. That was Keem's star. Of course, this is 2012. But I mean, let's be honest. He, if is that what happened? Did he actually jack off a dog in front of thousands of people? I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the clip. I haven't been inclined to look at the clip because I don't like watching. Yeah. Dogs. Well, I mean, I'm not inclined either. I don't want to stay away from that clip. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it might be criminal to look at a clip like that. I'm not sure, but I, it's I, so long ago, and it's not even like that egregious. I mean, Keemstar reported on a story. Well, let's that be maybe honest. He shouldn't have. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Say something. One of the people we cover was caught, you know, or one of their kids, Sargon, had a fucking lost, whatever, just for example. And in the background, his kids start jacking off a dog or some shit. I mean, I'm probably going to, I could see myself making a commentary on that, right? I mean, that is that is yeah. that okay or is that out of bounds? I don't know. You just had your camera on and your kid's jacking off a dog on camera? If that's what happened in it, this case. Yeah, I don't, I don't really see, like, the huge egregious action from Keem in this scenario. I mean, like, I guess he was implying that he was like hammering at home, which I mean, if he's like continuously talks about like every month, like, Hey, remember when he, your kid jacked off the dog? Maybe, but like, I, I don't know. It seems like he only said in December, 2012, no matter what this guy says, it's like, well, you let your kid jack off the fucking dog. Yeah, on I did, like every response. Like, I didn't even know about the story. I've been following Keem for five years. Obviously he hasn't came up since 2012. Like, it's not like Keem's like, Hey guys, daily reminder, Woody gamer tags, Kid jacked off a dog. Wasn't there, like, wasn't there a South Park episode about this? <laughs> Life really doesn't imitate art, I guess. He should start bringing it up at every occasion. I think that's what I would do. Uh, Obergroper says, "Thanks for playing this, bro." He was talking about the uh, Tucker Carlson clip. You're very welcome. Uh, Cooper says, "Cooper equals Zappa plus Quincy Jones plus Kanye plus Jay Dilla plus Steely Dan." Wow, that's quite the mix there. Uh, Obergroeper says America first. Indeed. Cooper says twenties will be a big decade. I will make stream proud. I, d I hope so. I disavow. If you don't, Obergroeper says, yes, 
Well, I would have to agree. Matt Field says, Vouch has marital relations with a literal manatee. Oh, poor Vouch. Somebody added me today and they said, who is that in that picture? I keep seeing going by on Twitter. I don't have no idea who that is. I said, I quote tweeted, it said, Vouch is now more known as the guy from that picture with the fat bitch walking around in the background. <laughs> than he is for being Vouch. Dude, uh, any of his political takes, dude, just yes. no, nothing in comparison to that image. It's so much more important. It's iconic. You know what? I wonder, can uh, we get it? I, I might sell a shirt with that on it. I wonder, I wonder what the... <laughs> how did that even happen? How did that image even happen? I was... Uh, I can't... I was so upset when that came on my timeline. I was just like, why? What is this? <laughs> why did this happen? How did this happen on stream? I just don't. That was the part that I couldn't get. Like, this is on stream. The cameras are on. I don't know. Audio is one thing. <laughs> like, your, your big ass is walking around like naked. Like, what the moment. Like, <laughs> Damn. Uh, oh, my God. The camera was on the whole time, huh? Oh shit! <laughs> Did he know he was streaming, the... or I mean, like the nah, chat overlay was on. <laughs> I think he might have knew, but obviously she didn't know. Also, I mentioned this last night too. She's got a robe on, Bo Blacks. Why is she not? Why is the robe all it just tied up? What's the point? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't. Little... She, there's not one big enough. It's just. It just seemed like a lot of things were wrong with this. Uh, let's see. Dan Bigfoot says, Kushner, Servitives are the real con ink. Shin Chan 256B says, Tony just wants more attention. Fuck him. Snake. Wow. That was kind of, that was even more harsh than what I said. I'm just tired of hearing about him. Like It's like every video, it's always back to this old man. It's like, okay, shut up. I don't care. Yeah, it. it's just been so. It's been five years, dude. Whenever someone's like, "Why is Keemstar a bad guy?" He <laughs> called an old man a pedophile. It was it was for two hours, and then he apologized right after, and he did everything he could. Like, I'm not. It's, yeah, uh, he it's apologized, just so dumb. and I don't know. I, I just don't really. It's they're they're clearly only doing that for optics reasons. Bo Blacks, yeah, it, them. They want to put the old man, all oh, the poor old man, on there. Keemstar picked on this guy. That's why they keep harping on that. Yeah, it's more of like Keem made a mistake than Keem is like being malicious, although he is malicious in like some other instances. But with the Tony thing, it's just like, I don't know. It's just such a scapegoat. A lot of these arguments are, in my opinion. Well, it, uh, it's also, you know, it's coming from Ethan Klein, who has been known to do the very same things he's now criticizing yeah. Keem for. Yeah, you know, the uh, Patrice Wil uh, Wilson thing? That was brought up to that, me like, last night. Yeah. yeah, he called that guy like a pedo. And then he d he never apologized for like three years. And when this guy was like on the verge of suicide, he was just like, lol, this guy's creepy or whatever on his podcast. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's just like, that's so much worse in my opinion. I don't know. I hate when I, I hear his tone of voice and you know, all the dirt this guy's done, which is fine. I don't even care. Like, I, I just don't like him. Like I never sat there and said, you know, Ethan Klein, he's no, I was, a snake or whatever you know just evil person i just don't like like i just don't like the look of his face i don't like the sound of his voice it was nothing about any of that but the, the tone of the videos it's like oh you know more of a moralistic you know like keep stars this evil figure and we're the good yeah. people and it's like okay you know yeah what? like all you guys are like online. Yeah. Or uh, Keem's like Adolf Hitler to him or something. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, we're the righteous force. We're the, I mean, know, we're fighting the Sith mama, or something. That's kind of how yeah. he sounds, you know. Go ahead. According to Mo Ma Yo Mama, he actually is pretty much Adolf Hitler, but. <laughs> yeah. Well, by the way, I'll bring that up next. But, yeah, I just it's just the tone. And I, you know, both of you guys have been shit talking online forever. And you both got all kinds of shit. Neither one, you know, whatever. Who cares? Now, and Ethan Klein comes from that era of YouTube when people did all sorts of like wacky and goofy shit and said all sorts of offensive shit. Like yeah. Filthy Frank. That's the same era. That's the era that Ethan Klein came from. And now right. he's going to pretend to be some moral police telling people. Yeah. You know, In what 2017, he yes. made a podcast where he was like, yeah, I, I love. I love saying, you know, N word, F word, or whatever. The NF, the NF combo. The NF that's, word. Yeah, dude, the combo. Yes, the NF combo. That's what we, the, I dubbed it here on the, on the kills. The dreaded NF combo. That was 2017 oh, after Trump was already in office. That's not even, yeah. just, just think about it that way. Trump was already president oh, and he was saying this shit. 
So and that video had a ton of likes too. Like it wasn't <laughs> yeah. frowned upon in the YouTube community. People were like, what "Oh, happened? you said that? Okay." What <laughs> happened, Bo Blacks? You know what? That's a fair question for know. you too. What the fuck has happened over the last three years where that was you know laughed at and liked? There was nothing seen as you know bad about that really i don't know i feel like there's always like a flow to the internet to where it's like uh p- people love really edgy shit to fight back against pc then people become pc to fight back against the edge lords and then it like keeps flip-flopping over the years like every like four or so years like it's like edgy pc edgy pc but yeah, i'll tell you, you know, exactly what happened point. that changed everything we've had three adpocalypses oh that now. too well, that's what has fucked point. everything up. We could have our edgy content if it wasn't for all of these fucking journalists that are going uh-huh. out of their way to destroy Dude, YouTube. To it's insane. Legacy media. It's insane because I literally read tweets on my YouTube channel and I get demonetized for saying stuff like fuck. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> like why can't I make money on reading someone else's tweets? I don't. It's just such a simple oh, that's thing. Why, yeah, but... and that's why you, when you watch YouTube now, almost every video has the curses bleeped out because of, yeah, like, yeah, with the bleep sound effect. God, I just so find gay. it annoying. I take the demonetization anyways. I'm like, fuck that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not bleeping that shit. It's so gay. Oh my god. That's so and dumb. then they let all these. Oh man, that's the other thing. Uh, it's just not equal. They have different rules for their corporate creators too. Um, yeah. And yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. Of problems each- uh, I don't know if Ethan's content nuke video is monetized, but technically it should be demonetized because all my videos uh, about content nuke have been demonetized for like global like uh, cat- catastrophe or whatever because I have the word nuke in it. No. So all of <sighs> Ethan's videos should theoretically be demonetized if he has nuclear in them, but I guess YouTube's like playing favorites or something. I'm not sure. Or it is well, demonetized. Yeah, the, the Goku Naruto video being taken down shows that explicitly. Like I said today, yeah. YouTube Keemstar has called YouTube's bluff. And I said today that they had two options. One, they're going to have to leave the video up and let it go viral to basically try to prove that they're neutral. Or they just say, fuck it, mask off. We don't care that you know that we're protecting Ethan Klein. We're going to take down the video. Yeah. What yeah. do you think about the call? And then I'll read these and we'll we'll take some calls and stuff and do some other stories too. But what do you think about the call to ultimately take this video down today? Do you think Keem knew that this would happen and that this was uh, you know, why he did it? Just to make Keem, you know, uh Ethan Klein look like shit and like he's in league with, with the bigs there at uh, YouTube? I think that Keem just wanted to expose Ethan for who he for his shitty things because he just wants revenge. And this video was an easy re-uploading this video was an easy way to do this. It, they specifically edited the video so it wouldn't like go against harassment guidelines, like they edit out the gun segments and some other segments to the video. Uh, and it still got taken down. So I don't think Keem thought it would get taken down. Oh, I so thought, you don't I, think that was a thing? You, you think no, that, I, that I think he wanted to him. put on the pressure to Ethan so Ethan no. would have to respond for his bad behavior, just like how Keem has had to respond to his bad behavior. I think it was more to put pressure on Ethan rather than uh, call YouTube's bluff. But now there is a copy of that up on BitChute. Uh, Keem, I don't know if he's listening now. Twelve hundred people listening live across YouTube over on Chillstream Uncut. Uh, thank you for the uh, mayor, sir. Uh, also here on D Live, of course, D Live TV slash The Ralph Retort. Uh, but uh, promoting the BitChute copy of that would be a really nice thing to do right about now. I mean, that's what I would do. But of course, I'm not Keemstar, obviously. I would be much wealthier. Uh, but uh, I think that's what I would do is tweet out that bit shoot copy. Not only would it be good to get the, you know, uh, where everybody would know where a copy of that's at so you can get more eyes on it, but it would also be a promotion of YouTube just to spit on, I mean, of bit shoot to spit on YouTube. Maybe he doesn't want to do that, yeah. though. Uh, maybe he's not taking it that, <laughs> that harshly. That could be part of the calculation there, too. But um, okay. Gator, were you going to say something real quick? I had another question, but I forgot what the fuck it was. Oh, 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 I do remember now. It's the Yo Mama guy. Tomorrow night, he's going to be on... Yes, uh, I'm so excited. RFC After Hours. Um, Now, how do you think that's going to go? Obviously, I'm not a... I won't pretend to be objective. I don't like the guy. I think he's a fucking idiot. But uh, what are you, what are you looking forward to asking? I, I think we're going to make him see the light. I think we're going <laughs> to uh, convert him to the kill stream. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't know, like, it ju- just logically, like, the whole concept of being on a YouTube, or being on a YouTube show makes you complicit in 
like whatever ideology Jay may have. I'm not saying you have an alt right ideology, but even if you did, if did just going yeah. on the show, it, it still doesn't make the guests on the show, you know, alt right. That whole concept is just crazy. And if you like apply it to any other YouTuber, like he he applied it all the way up to Mr. Beast. If you apply <laughs> like interacting with any alt right person, it's like contagious, like coronavirus. Like you give them <laughs> alt rightism or whatever, and it spreads to someone else. <laughs> there would be a pandemic. Everyone would be alt right, dude. There'd be like counts of like millions of people getting caught with the alt right virus. So like that whole logic is just so flawed, and that's like the whole core of his video. So if I explain that to him. I think he'll be smart enough to understand, like, oh, shit, I just got, like, you know, trolled by Maddox or whatever. I hope so. And I mean, you know, honestly, I, other than the lies that he told, you know, and some of the bullshit he's putting out, I don't even know this guy. You know, I have nothing personal. I think he's just against impressionable. Him. That's the impression I he get. Just, I don't know. He said oh, a lot well. of dumbass shit, though. I got, I got to be real. And the whole, like you said, literally... He did, I forget it was a tweet or something, but it was a pipeline and he went Mr. Beast. I think Mr. Beast to Keemstar. And then he linked Keemstar to the kill stream. And then it's like Richard Spencer and all this. It's like, yeah. dude, what the Mr. fuck? Mr. Beast are you promotes about? Richard Spencer, dude. Well, that's what. Oh. <laughs> Before we know, next video is going to be like donating ten million dollars to Richard Spencer. I, can't to help. Even, I just don't even understand how so you can dumb. get there. It's like, okay, what if you went on MSNBC? Is pretty left leaning. What you go on MSNBC and you're, you know, a fucking communist now or Fox News? By the way, I think we're kind of all over the place, honestly. And we've hosted, you know, a ton of different people on this show and yeah. we'll continue to, to do so. And I, you know, resent all that bullshit. But even if you accepted that, that doesn't mean, like you said, you don't take on the attributes of the, of the panel or the host just because you're yeah. on their show. That's See, if we go to the logical extreme of this, okay, well, Michelle Malkin has been on the kill stream, right? Michelle Malkin's also been on NBC. You know who else has been on NBC? Barack Obama. Barack <laughs> Obama the Nazi. Yeah, you can do it. Or we're all oh. Obama supporters. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> There it is. There's the link. Obama. Shin Chan. Oh, I already read that. He was going to call Tony a snake again. Cooper says Gator. LOL. Noisem says H3 destroyed Patrice Wilson. He can't find work now. Damn. Damn Bigfoot says that was the damn. And then damn Bigfoot says what is guest overall goal and what he does. Okay. A little uh, philosophical question there. What, what is your overall goal? Bo Blux. Oh, uh, I just like to retweets and laugh at drama i don't know i don't really have like an end goal no I just master keep, plan like, here <laughs> no i don't have any master plan i just have fun doing what i do uh yeah <laughs> it's pretty simple you know trying to run I'm, for office or what's your angle here actually Hell, what are you trying to raise your profile or what's going on okay uh now oh this is something okay so first off i guess i mean this is fair i guess to comment we 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 haven't talked about it a lot but we brought it up a little bit uh with the guest earlier logo daedalus i think he said daedalus or whatever i say daedalus i call it daedalus ah whatever his book is selfie suicide check that out anyway uh donald trump uh, going at twitter i don't know if you saw that now that's not political that's more of a twitter process question uh you can answer that or just tell everybody what your normal day on Twitter is like. Oh, my normal day on what my normal day on Twitter is like. Yeah. Uh, I, I have like tweet deck set up, which is like, I don't know like me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I have like, uh, different feeds for different type of people. Uh, I screenshot as much as I can. Then I uh, organize the screenshots and, uh, premiere my editing program. And then if, uh, there's a lot of tweets with a certain person, like say the quartering is saying a lot on something. I'll go to his profile and see if I missed any, add them in. I'm just on Twitter a lot, screenshotting and organizing tweets. It's it's kind of boring. I don't know. It's just all day on Twitter. Tweet deck definitely. It's pretty much mandatory power. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I, sometimes I can switch back to the regular if I'm just not, you know, trying to. You know, I'm trying to get my brain a break or whatever. Sometimes I will switch back, but just for a moment, because uh, yeah, I do, I do like to. Okay, uh, let's it's see gonna here. suck when Twitter finally gets mad and shuts it down because you know they're gonna do it. Oh, oh shit! Oh my god, that would be so horrible for me. 
they're already the changes they're doing are pretty horrible for me because like they haven't implemented this on all Twitter accounts. So like I go on my alt to screenshot tweets, but like with replies, like there's this weird thing where like you if you click on a tweet, you can't see the likes on the reply unless you click on the specific reply. And there's like it's just really weird. And they changed how replies work. And it's just so inconvenient for me. Oh, use that better. Uh, use the plug in uh, better tweet deck. It, oh, it sure. significantly improves everything. I hate yeah. how they did replies. We were talking about this earlier. I know that this is kind of a, you know, inside baseball type conversation that only Twitter power users would even care about. But yeah, it's fucking annoying. Anyway, here goes Joe Biden with his mask today. Um, I, I, <laughs> did you see? The I just bring this that? up because he looks like he has panties on his face. That I mean, that was the first thing I thought of these. Was <laughs> that's what I thought. Now too. this is the picture. This is his profile picture, by the way. Why did was, this is the thing I couldn't understand because <laughs> the picture they I show in the other one, like it, it looks you know it's on straight. And he looks a little goofy, but you know it's not too bad. On this one, it's all crooked. It looks like it's just, but look, it's coming off his ear. Look how it's pushing down his ear. It's not even fully over his left ear. Um, so it also looks a little less normal. Like maybe it was fashioned out of, you know, uh, panties or something like that. I don't know what you they're doing. You have to doing. see the edit I posted, Joe Links. <laughs> uh, still, oh, not the joke. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's not... What does she want Biden to do? I just don't know why they did that. Obviously, so I saw some people on Twitter that said they must have just done that on purpose for the meme because there's no other reason. Like they had other pictures available where he looks normal with the mask on. Well, I mean, you know, as normal as you look with a fucking mask on, which is starting to get pretty fucking normal. Uh, but yeah, I, I think they must have done it on purpose, maybe for the for the memes. Uh, let's see. What else was it here? Hold on. Uh, Lana Del Rey. Oh, the blackface. That's another thing we had to do. Uh, Jimmy Fallon under fire for blackface sketch, uh, 2000 SNL episode. It's just a short clip. He's playing Chris Rock. I think Chris Rock's probably been on his show like a hundred times. And I think they're personal friends as well. But some, somebody on Twitter, you know, discovered this clip, uh, from 20 years ago. And now Jimmy Fallon's getting dragged across the coals. Uh, there's the clip. I just posted it in the show links. Voblex, you see that? Rock! Yeah. Okay, it's very short. It's 31 seconds. Of course, it's courtesy of uh, NBC Entertainment, whatever. Lauren Michaels, whatever the fuck his production company is called. Uh, all right, you guys ready? Yep. yep. All right, let's hit it right now. Rock! Now we're talking. Where is he? Man, oh man, <laughs> read this book. <laughs> I've seen who wants to be a millionaire, and guess what? Not a lot of black folks on the show. Right. <laughs> Not a lot of black folks on the show. You know why? Because black folks don't like to answer questions. <laughs> All they want to be millionaires, but you got to ask that kind of question. Like, in 1981, how many grams of crack did Rick James smoke when he was on Super Fish? <laughs> Regis, you think the only way to get a brother on the show is to name it, who wants $50 cash and a pair of Pumas? <laughs> oh, no, that was, that was Jimmy Fallon back in... In 2000. Wow. He's, I guess he's all right now. Well, yeah. He's super racist, of course, Jimmy Fallon, famous comedian, host of The Tonight Show. They just discovered this. By the way, that's a pretty good Chris Rock, I thought. That was yeah. fantastic. Has he apologized yet? I haven't actually Googled this. Let me see. I've made a continuous and severe lapse in my judgment. I know this is a sensitive Did issue, he? Oh, and I'm no. working very hard to uh, rectify. Uh, <laughs> this is a typical uh, response. He actually it was a different did. time back then. Oh, he did apologize, too. I just now saw it. Oh, no. Ah, shit. This was uh, from 4.58 p.m. I should have seen this, but I guess I was doing something else. He says, in 2000, while on Saturday Night Live, I made a terrible decision. A terrible decision decision to do an impersonation of Chris Rock while in blackface. There is no excuse for this. Yeah, there is. It was funny. Anyway, he says, I'm <laughs> what the fuck? That's the only excuse you need. God, he just sold out 
all of comedy. It was funny was back then, so say it was funny. Like, okay, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if that would you know go what? over well. Now, News you know articles what? are like Jimmy Fallon thinks blackface was funny. <laughs> yeah, but he just sold out the entire comedic profession, though. With that, basically, uh, you know what he could have said? Well, looking back, I probably wouldn't do that skit again today. You know, given cur- current cultural attitudes. But like you said, it was a different time, you know. It was not malicious. I'm friends with Chris Rock. I'm not going to sit here and apologize for every fucking little joke I've ever made, every skit I've done, you know. And he could have said that. You know know if if he made a response like that, uh, people would rip him apart. Oh, sure. But he's already, I mean, they're not going to, I don't know. I would assume NBC is not going to fire him over something like this, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's a little more tenuous. Uh. Maybe they probably told him. not. Maybe I don't know. I was, was twenty so. years I mean, ago. He's pretty <laughs> solid, and it was on their network already. So yeah, was, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like it was on some obscure, you know, YouTube channel or some video that he shot on VHS way back when, straight to video or something. No, that was broadcast live on on NBC. Uh, okay, and the last part says. I am very sorry for making this unquestionably offensive decision and thank all of you for holding me accountable. Oh God. Oh, nice. Thank you for being a pain in my uh, my ass for bringing up something 20 years ago. I already forgot about. I'm sure he's so much. I'm so thankful. (laughs) He's so thankful. No way. Thank God, dude. He would have cont- he would have maybe started doing ba- blackface today if he wasn't held accountable for that, dude. Fuck yeah, he would. His next show, he was planning blackface, and then he canceled it because of this. That's what I said People on Twitter. Accountable. He should have come out tonight <laughs> as blackface Bill Cosby, not fucking Chris Rock, Bill Cosby, and did a whole riff on that. That's what he should have done. Oh, well. Oh. Alas, that didn't happen. Now, let me see here. Uh, let's take some calls. Do we have any Gator? Hold on, let me look. Oh, there are a couple. I called Southern Dingo back. What are you doing? Dingo. Oh, I don't think he's, I don't think he's there. Oh, hey, hey. Oh, oh, no, there we go. Why were you arguing Sorry with the enough. guest earlier? What got into you? Is he still there? No. No, he's gone now. Okay, I was actually going to call in to clarify and apologize. I don't know. Oh, now you want to apologize. No, no, no. no I've made really, an unquestionably but... offensive decision. Thank you all for no, holding me accountable. My, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, yeah. No, my wife came outside and my kid had just shit his diaper. And so I was kind of in a hurry and that's what came out. But to clarify my point, all right, it's not that like, I don't think you should read this or that. I, I, I've actually read a lot about Malcolm X. I, I've read a lot of the quotes in his biography and everything. Like, I know a lot about him. But what I'm trying to get at here is like the, uh, the focus on like, when when non-whites agree with our points is is a sickness that we need to purge like how many times hey. do you ever see any pro black people quoting us about Listen, you know, wanting think, to help them Dingo segregate? think what he was saying he first off he agreed with what you said second off he didn't say you had to you know Malcolm X he was saying just read Malcolm X from your with the perspective of what you brought up in your call not that you co-signed everything that Malcolm that you read from Malcolm X, you know what I mean? It I was let just, me ask you a question. You were you, praising you know black Captain people Yacht. in your call. Do you not remember? And he was saying, "Yeah, maybe Malcolm." I Malcolm begrudgingly X. said one thing that uh, that I envied about him. But let me ask you a question. Uh, All right, say you... I was Captain. Say I was Captain Yacht, and then like uh, somebody said that to him, like, "Oh, you should read the works of uh, George Lincoln Rockwell. He 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 believes in segregation too." He would be like, "Shit, get your motherfucking ass out of here." Yeah, and nobody would bat an eye. But when I when I say it, like it, it's weird. Yeah, when you say it, I have to say farewell. Thank you, Dango, for calling in. I appreciate it. God. But I do appreciate it. We're gonna try to set up the the debate with Captain Tazariak. That'll be a delight, won't it, Gator? Might be the last kill stream on D Live. Yeah, <laughs> it might be. We'll see. <sighs> And it might actually be Tazari actually gets us in trouble, not Dingo. All right. Wolf Pup, go ahead. Oh, what? Are you there, bud? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Hey, I just want to say, Dingo is right. We should be looking to our own people. All so- right. Thank you, Wolf Pup. Thank you. Kiki Beaner, go ahead. How are you doing? Are you there? 
Hey, yes. We're, yes. We're, doing um, right. we're doing great. We're doing great. Hey, um, you know, it's funny how they're talking about like Jane Fallon being like all like a racist now because they did blackface. Did everyone forget that Chris Rock in the 90s did the difference between the black people and the N word skit? Uh, I didn't forget that. No, but he's black, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, By the way, him. yeah, and honestly, I would like to hear what Chris Rock has to say about this. He he might not undercut him now, because like I said, I think he's actually friends with Jimmy Fallon, so he might not come out, but I guarantee you Chris Rock would not cuck like that, <laughs> period. Yeah, uh, and uh, you you notice him and Seinfeld are pretty ha- much the most hardcore people on how PC is, you know, is ruining comedy or, you know, affecting it at least. And so there's no way in hell. Chris Rock would cuck like that. So, I I mean, it, it's sad to see. I've never been a big Fallon guy, to be honest. But, wow, to cuck out that hard, too. There's there's degrees of cucking that he could have done as we laid out. That was just complete. Oh, and then thank you for holding me accountable. Oh, yeah. wow, you're, you're tickling the balls at the same time? Like, wow, you're going there. Yeah, I don't think like, anyone believes, like, uh-huh. that he's thankful that he no. was held accountable for something he made, did 20 years ago. Like you have to be brain dead. Yeah. If you think that's like a genuine statement, I'm thankful for getting raked over the coals all day on social media. I really appreciate y'all doing that. Um, yeah, not the case. Anyway, go ahead. Caller. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. He pretty much just took a spirit bomb of cum and ate it all up. But, um, I don't know if you saw, I posted this in some stories last night. Um, apparently they did a Sean King hit piece, the daily beast. And, Oh, I didn't see that. Surprisingly, a lot of people are like a lot. I saw I, I saw this on like Black Twitter. Basically, they were like, "See, we told you Sean King was an idiot, and you guys are still gonna support him." Oh, I Good see that. Malcolm X, <laughs> dude. Sean King has been getting roasted about Black Twitter for a minute now. Of course, he's got basically the mainstream media has kind of made him a thing, though. Um, he's a, been a fraud for a long. God, this guy's just so creepy looking. I'm looking at this fucking. Daily Beast article, and it's just an up close picture of his face. Ugh. Anyway, sorry, caller, I shouldn't have went there, but go ahead, finish it up. Real yeah, quick. yeah, basically, like everyone's kind of like, and then people are like, like, see, we told you he's a massive fraud, and his North Star bullshit paper that he keeps blaming on him, on other people, not himself, and that he's just in for the money, blah blah blah. I'm so surprised nobody's like. No big has any big black figures actually called him out on him stuff, or it's always just been like I mean, DeRay and a lot of them went at Sean King for a long time, yeah. Um, so and a lot of people on Twitter, and he's had internal beefs going all the way back, so yeah, yeah. Hopefully, this like finally ends his career, other than him, and he'll just he's a real piece of shit, and he does some fucked up you know blatant what was it he said the other uh, about the i guess it was the people in georgia he's pretty much threatening them uh he you know them. people to come to their house though i'm the only one just standing in between you guys and and the lynch mob basically i don't know i was fucked up but thank you caller i appreciate you calling in yeah you have a good one man you too uh now there is another video that uh, was sent to me i guess it came out a couple days ago i don't know if, if you've seen it Bo blacks but you're about to see it Okay. If, I can, if I can find it. Okay, fuck. How many windows can I have open? Jesus Christ. Okay. Look at all those Look tabs. at all those tabs. Now, before, though, I'm going to read these real quick. Let me do my uh, fiduciary duty here. If I can find the fucking window. It's, you know what? It's because, the, it's because Brave wasn't showing up correctly earlier. Uh, okay. So now I have two different instances of Chrome open up. One's usually just for the stream on the screen and now have another side one. Anyway, it's confusing. Paplin Kermich says, any luck with Jay Dyer versus Captain Tazariok? Jay Dyer said he might be interested in that, but he wants to debate sticks first. So. Ooh, that would be a fun match. Yeah, he wants to, he really wants to debate sticks and I'm going to try to set that up. That's what I would really like to see too. So. Um, and now, apparently, if that's true, what the Super Chatter earlier said, uh, Fuentes versus Destiny again would be really good, too, right here on the kill stream. So um, I'd already wanted to set that up. Oh, I love Southern Digo. I see him in the chat. It's a little bubbly sometimes, but we love him. Not bubbly in the drunken sense, bubbling up with uh, fieriness, I guess. Okay, uh, let's see. Shinchan 256B says blackface is hilarious. Let's bring it back. Well, I don't know if I'll go that far. Mm. 
Uh, I'd rather not, but <laughs> I won't personally be the one to bring it back. But if you would like to go under undertake that initiative, that's on you. But <clears throat> I don't think it's probably not coming back, to be honest. But uh, damn, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think blackface is making a resurgence anytime soon. Just a wild yes. I don't think people were a fan of that joke. I think that one's the ship has already sailed. Yeah, I, I think that one's run its course, you know. Now, <laughs> whether you think that's fortunate or unfortunate, I just think it's it's just the fact of the matter. Okay. Sam <clears throat> Bigfoot says, "Remember how uh, based how based Mad TV was?" I do actually. Holy shit, the nineties in a whole as a whole were fucking based. Anyway, Max yourself says, "Never go full retard, Jimmy. Never apologize. Not like that, too. I can't get over that. Was just." Man, what is he gonna hang himself next? Like, what does he want? Start beating himself with his own belt and shit? Like, what else do they want? Rush Limbaugh Groiper says Dingo should quit being a wig nut. LOL. Uh oh, he won't like that. <laughs> Flatland Chicken Ranch. Wait, let me make sure I got that right. Yes, Flatland Chicken Rancher. Excuse me. I should have known that. I saw it already. Thank you for the ninja guinea. Says I don't know if Dingo has the debate skills to beat Captain T. Well, I don't know. I can't comment on that. I'll be the moderator if it happens. Southern Dingo says, you're a good dude, Ralph. Also, hashtag Wolf Pup for president. Weepy P. Hole says, Ryan Dawson versus the captain. I don't know if that would fit. Uh, Dawson was another possibility for um, Sticks as well. Or not Sticks, but um, God damn it. Who was it? Uh, Dyer. Uh, so that's another possibility there that I was trying to set up back in the fall, but I never got that set up, so. Seek and destroy or seek and destroy. Yeah, seek and destroy ninety nine says Ralph. Mary fuck kill. Oh man. Uh Syrian girl, Cassandra Fairbanks, Caitlin Bennett. Uh I mean, this is all, of course, hypothetical. I'll, I'll say Mary fuck sunset. How about that? We'll change it to that. Uh Sunset, Caitlin Bennett, fuck Cassandra Fairbanks, Mary, Syrian girl. Another that is pro. the only proper choice i think and i mean that i was only because i was asked you know it's not it's not right See, i will here. avoid commenting on that because i feel that is unprofessional as these are uh guests on our program but you, you know well i mean i'm the host i honestly shouldn't have commented on <laughs> i'm just giving you shit anyway all right here we go you guys ready there it is in the show links it's the simpsons well Lux, have you seen oh this? i don't like that thumbnail you, okay. haven't, <laughs> you haven't seen this one yet, huh? All right. No. All right, let's watch right, it. it. Let's hit it right now. Flash kids. I love that disavowal right at the start. That's a really good one. Marge, everyone's going to think I'm a cook. Because you're helping your wife take some pictures? Do you have to have an OnlyFans account? Homer. Sites like OnlyFans empower consenting young women to utilize their sexuality in a healthy, mature manner that helps them support themselves and their loved ones. Don't you want Lisa to go to a good college? I guess that makes sense. <laughs> oh, I just got a request from Mo. He wants me to open a bottle of Duff with my pussy. <laughs> oh my god. No! <laughs> I could take on more shifts at the plant. Dad, listen. If Mom wants to display her femininity no. and Mark wants to watch from the treehouse and everyone's consenting, what's wrong with that? The more we can grow as a culture to accept these platforms that allow women to cut out the middleman, the better they'll be able to live and contribute to society. If anything, Mom's setting a good example for me. Wow. Here's that saxophone you wanted. Thanks, sweetie. Lisa's music teacher wants me to play the Simpsons theme tune with my pussy. I don't know, Marge. I know you don't know. What? Sorry, homie. Was it recording? <laughs> it does it. You can call me a boomer or think I'm old-fashioned, but there are lines I, as a man, am not willing to cross. When did a pussy spread go from being an intimate moment between a loving couple to a $5 perk for all my friends? I won't stand for it, Marge. And if you don't like it, then maybe we need to rethink this marriage. 
Mr. Simpson, no. your wife has been awarded custody of the children, no. the house, and half your shit. Until the day you depart oh, this birthday no, coil, no. a broken man. <laughs> However, this court also finds you not guilty of being a cuck. <laughs> Here's the Presidential Medal of Freedom, $500, a 1DX gamer chair, and my respect. <laughs> Based and red bill. Quickly, grab your phone, build a castle, your castle. All right, I think that's an ad there, Tim. Oh, yeah, I yeah, that. I was about to say, <laughs> that's <laughs> definitely a sponsor. I've done that enough That almost got me. <laughs> that almost got me. Uh, I will, I will uh, promote their channel, uh, though. Uh, Flash Gits, F-L-A-S-H-G-I-T-Z. Hilarious video there, I have to say. And they did work in the ad in a funny way, too, but I'm still not going to watch it. The Simpsons. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, Weepy P Hill already read that. Let's see. Let me check over here too. Entropy. Yeah, she got me to read that. I shouldn't have though. Okay. What else? Uh, I think I'm caught up. Are there? I think we're caught up with the callers. There wasn't a couple stories, but I mean, it's like political. The Dominic Cummings thing over there in the UK. I could go into that, but it's a little dry. It doesn't really fit. We could do the Lana Del Rey. Do you want to do the Lana Del Rey? I don't know if you cover the entertainment beat very much, Bo Blex, but... Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I only cover petty YouTube <laughs> drama between shitty YouTubers. So. <laughs> yeah. She's too famous. <laughs> yeah, sorry. sorry. That's too, she's too famous for you to cover. Lana Del Rey insists culture is sick right now after backlash over equality comments. Uh, let's see... I just man, I don't even know. Honestly, we watched her video last week. I could turn on her video. It's six fucking minutes. I know she's just gonna be all strung out and shit. We watched her shit last week. I mean, I will say strung out, but she seems really fucking high. I don't know. Maybe that's just how she is normally. I've never interacted with Lana Del Rey, but she seemed really fucking high when we watched that video last week. And I still am not a hundred percent sure what she was trying to say, Gator. So and and I read those quotes in the article earlier too, and they didn't really help. They didn't really shine yeah, this I don't know fucking clue. I don't know what she's going on about. Yeah, I really, man, I can't glean anything from that. And if I read the quotes, and I still really can't tell you what the fuck this bitch is trying to say, I don't think six minutes from the cunt is going to help us at all. But you, know, <laughs> but you know who did help us tonight? Bo Blacks. He helped us. He came in here. He gave us the oh, breakdown yeah. right away. I kicked it to him. I just passed in the rock, dropped the dime, you know, behind the back to Bo Blacks, and he just sank it. Nothing but net on the breakdown. The funniest yeah, I'm part not, about tonight. <laughs> the funniest part about tonight was that apparently Nick Diorio's been asleep like all day and woke up at like <laughs> eleven twenty. It was like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that. I'm just like, oh my god, fucking Diorio, dude. <laughs> now is there anything we left out from all this that we didn't hit up or that you thought you were going to say that you didn't get to say or whatever uh not really i didn't think so uh, either but you didn't tell people where they can find you on youtube oh yeah you can find me at uh youtube.com slash boblex too but what i would really encourage you to go uh to right now is twitch.tv slash augie rfc because tomorrow Ooh. we're talking with yo mama yeah. the one and only <laughs> So, I'm going to be in the audience yeah. for that one, actually. So I'm for excited sure. to see what goes I'm on. I'm so that. excited. 100% going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, the show's doing great on Twitch. Yeah, it is. It's uh, getting a lot of viewers, a lot more than I expected moving from YouTube to Twitch. It's insane. Dude. I mean, I knew you guys would have, you know, a solid base just because you got a lot of good fans, but our viewers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but... I mean, you guys were getting what, 400, 500 viewers? I was like, damn. yeah. Was it's like, a, damn. That's a really good Froggy show. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was like, that's, you know, some top cut. And you know, he's getting he... like a shit ton of like gifted subs and stuff like that over there, too. I'm just like, stuff. Jesus, yeah. dude. Oh, he's dude. like rolling in it. Yeah. There's he's doing great. So much for demonetization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's one good thing I will say about Twitch, and that's that they have managed to monetize their platform better than anybody else in the game oh by far by far 
Yeah, that's what uh, I was talking with him about this very subject earlier. Uh, yeah, that's what that's what I heard. Now, of course, I won't invest too much over on Twitch. I don't think. I don't think that. Yeah, I'm pretty on. sure you like speak for two seconds on Twitch, and you'll be like yeah. banned immediately. You know what? <laughs> I'm I'm afraid to even play video games over there, honestly, just because of the off-platform stuff. Um, yeah, I know they wouldn't let me do a show like this. <laughs> no, they might let me play. Let me play my uh, Mass Effect Two or whatever. I I used to do playthroughs over there on Twitch every once in a while. Uh, but it's been a while. Anyway, Bo Blacks, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you coming on. Hopefully, no we'll be back. I, I don't know how much. Oh, one more prediction. How much longer is this thing gonna go? Oh my uh, god, I think it's dying down now. But I could see it going on like for another like week to half a week, maybe. It depends what you def- define by like dying, because like people are still people are still thing. gonna make yeah uh, as like a current topic. Yeah, I think it's gonna die within the next week. Unless something big happens that's unexpected, but yeah, I think yeah. it's going to die within the next week. I would agree with that very much so. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you so much coming on the kill stream. You have a good one, man. No problem. It was fun. Yeah. All, right. All right, Gator. Thank you as well, sir. Also, as shout always. out to Logo Daylist, his book, Selfie Suicide. Uh, check that out as well. And I think that's that's it. Again, I did want to go through the Dominic Cummings story, but it's a little bit of a slog. Maybe I'll play the video real quick. Uh, and there was another video I was supposed to play that I told them I was going to play. Oh, I know what it is now. I'll play those two. I'll just do that solo, though. And uh, I appreciate you, sir. You have a good one. As Tell always, where they can find you. YouTube.com slash the Gator Gamer, DLive.tv slash Gator, and Twitter.com slash the Gator Gamer. Very good. Thank you so very much. You have a good one. All right. Now it's just me. I said I was going to play a couple videos and I will. Here's the Dominic Cummings video. Not exactly the required two meters apart. The media and police scrum around the Prime Minister's most powerful advisor, Dominic Cummings, at 8.45 this morning. He's determined not to resign for leaving his London home when he and his wife had coronavirus symptoms, but he can't be confident. Coronavirus? Eventually. He sacked. He has Especially coronavirus. Since almost 40 Tory MPs, under pressure from their constituents, do think he has to go. Including this rather important one, a minister in the Scottish office, no less, who's also a professional referee and is absolutely clear. Cummings deserves the red card. I am faced with people who have missed funerals, people who couldn't be with loved ones uh, as we were being treated or sadly died. Uh, and I can't, therefore, look at them in the eye and say they were wrong and Mr Cummings was right. But the health secretary begs to differ. My judgment, which is the same as the prime minister's judgment, is that um, what my, Mr. Cummings did was within the guidelines. Um, after all, the guidelines uh, allow for exceptional circumstances, particularly with regard to childcare. Secretary of State. Now, let me pause at 104. If you don't know what's going on here, uh, Boris Johnson's top advisor, basically like his Svengali, his top man. Uh, is accused of breaking the quarantine rules, flagrantly breaking them, basically. Uh, Boris Johnson not dismissing him, actually standing by him because he's that important to his operation. Uh, And there's a huge uh, row, to use a British term, over this. Uh, That's, in case you haven't gleaned that already, I'm not sure if they stated that explicitly, but that's what's going on. Let's continue. You and your wife tested positive for COVID-19. You have three young children, but you chose to stay at home in London. What is the relevant difference between you and Dominic Cummings? Um, The relevant difference, Robert, is that we had childcare readily available at home and Mr Cummings didn't. Thanks very much. Well, that was me, Tom. (laughs) But if Cummings didn't break the rules, Martin Poole, a vicar in Brighton, wants justice for others. Will the government review all penalty fines imposed on families travelling for childcare purposes during lockdown? You want We do man. understand the impact and the need uh, for making sure that children get adequate childcare. Uh, that is one of the uh, significant concerns that we've had all the way through this. And so I think, especially uh, coming from a, a man of the cloth, I think that is a perfectly reasonable <laughs> to take away that question. I'll have to talk to my Treasury colleagues before I can answer it in full. Uh, and uh, we'll look at it. And an Oxford professor of primary care is unimpressed. This is going to cause confusion. It's going to 
reduce the trust in the government, uh, and it's going to condone all sorts of breaches of whatever policy oh, comes out next. Oh, the poor of June. Middle of June we will see oh, the middle of June, it'll be crazy. He came to that. On Ardcastle today, where Cummings and his wife admitted they drove was one apparent breach oh. of the quarantine rules. The other alleged breaches were leaving the London home with his wife, Mary Wakefield, and their four-year-old son when both had symptoms and going into work in Downing Street when he first thought his wife was ill. Now, strikingly, tonight, the former health secretary, Jeremy Hunt, who's been influential throughout the crisis, said, I am afraid I'm not going to add my voice to the list of those calling for him to resign. I'm also Shut not up, convinced bitch. that politics gains much from the spectacle of scalp hunting. So against the normal rules of politics, Dominic Cummings may yet keep his job. Now, he clearly thinks so. I've already answered the question. But tomorrow is the big test when senior Conservative MPs ask the Prime Minister to explain why his powerful advisor is so important to him. All right, there we go. There's the coming story. I wanted to weigh in on it a little bit myself, but uh, yeah, that's the one of the big, probably the big, big political story over there in the UK. Conservatives kind of hurting this year um, as the coronavirus uh, crisis has uh, dragged on. Their poll numbers have kind of went down, you know, faster than anybody could have expected because this is kind of a unique situation. Uh, so that's uh, kind of the state of play. Keir Starmer, who I wasn't very high on when they picked him to lead the Labour Party, actually, according to polls, uh, not doing such a bad job so far. Now he's only like a month or so into the job, but still. Okay, one more video. I promised I'd play this too. My name's Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic this candidate. This is from Donald United Trump's Senate. campaign. Trump -Pop was a bad dude. Oh, I'm a Democrat. Going nuts. He'd be the oldest president in American history. Holy shit. Are you Winston really? Churchill. All right, Chuck. Thank you very much. Uh, it's Chris, I'm but Chris. anyway. It would put 720 million back in the workforce. We choose truth over facts. Oh, my God. Hello, and welcome <laughs> to the first episode of what we call Truth Over Facts. Today, we're examining the curious case of Wait, Sleepy Joe. Hold on. Can we pause it at 40 seconds and just note that they're using the same type of editing tactics that Dame Pesos uses on YouTube? And just note that that's what the Trump campaign is doing, as if Joe Biden was Monday in Matt in a Soyless Matt episode? Let's continue at 40 seconds. And, you know, the thing. Our investigation begins at a recent campaign stop in Texas. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. You know the thing. <laughs> the thing. Was Mr. Biden, who had access to our nation's top secrets during his disgraceful eight years as vice president, <laughs> trying to reveal state secrets? It's Some have suggested he was. Eight years. You know the thing. Yeah, bro, God I was damn. the first to tweet that I no. know the truth about the thing. It's disgraceful I've seen every eight years. national treasure over 87 times. He was <laughs> in national documents. He was... As it relates to the thing, I know exactly what he meant. Second Declaration of Independence. What? So we spent the last few days digging around in search of truth, truth over, over facts. facts. <laughs> Thank you for sitting down with us. Let me ask. Is there a second declaration what? of independence? Mark W. Historian? Mark so there you have historian? Joe Biden, who often doesn't know what state he's in. or They just ask, wait, hold on. Podcast Gang Gang 151, I got to pause. They just asked a, a fake person named Mark Historian if there was, in fact, a second declaration of independence. He did not give an answer. As far as we know, there is not a second, second declaration of independence. All right. That Margaret Thatcher is no longer the Prime Minister of Great Britain has not, in fact, discovered a new declaration of independence. A good one. Join us next time when we will work with a renowned sketch artist who will reveal who or what is a lying dog-faced pony soldier. <laughs> yes, I'm done <laughs> Holy shit. They're actually going to do the dog face pony soldier. Man, you know what? It's going to be fun this year. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people are probably going to die because of the virus and stuff, and that sucks. But, you know, if you live, this is going to be a fun election season. And uh, I can't wait for one. And.
end, I thank you all for supporting me here on the kill stream. Thank you to Logo Daedalus. Selfie Suicide is the book. It's on Amazon, a bunch of other places as well. Thank you to Gator. Thank you to Bo Blacks. He's on YouTube as, guess what? Bo Blacks. Check out tomorrow night, uh, Augie and uh, Bo Blacks as well. Uh, RFC After Hours. It comes on, I think, 7 p.m. Eastern, right before the kill stream anyway. Uh, and he's over on Twitch. Check that out. They're going to have that fucking loser from the Yo Mama cartoon on. Uh, and hopefully he has a mental breakdown on air, but we'll see. We shall see. That's it. Farewell. Goodbye. I want a peaceful Some said the kill stream. They drown a peaceful Some said the kill stream. Other now friends when I went to do him. I saw the kill strip had been struck down again. Secret flags and reports, but we all know who's to blame. Can't afford the retort. Giotti Jarbo's his name. That you won't take them round. Or all them channels you stride So just delete your account I'm sure there's folders to find You can't be split Some set the kill street Metal beast bullet, some said the kill stream. You won't be bullet, some said the kill stream. You never be bullet, some said the kill stream. You won't be bullet. Oh, no. Was I muted the whole time? Oh, my God. Well, I'm off air anyway, but uh, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, let me read these. Colin Stevens says, Ralph, you need to figure out how to get the potato farmer to go against the captain and get blown out for all to see. Studio IKN says, any of the leaf viewers come across a confused looking Muslim man aimlessly wandering the streets of Edmonton, muttering to himself about how his daughter turned to OnlyFans? I'm going to be real, Studio. I don't know what you're referencing here. <laughs> Uh, but let me see. Uh, okay. Let's see. Where else was I? Oh, there was one on D Live too. Yeah, no, I'm completely. They were getting on me in entropy, but I missed one on D Live too. Oh, Shin Chan 256B says, I love blackface and making fun of Brit Bongs. And then check suggest stories. Oh, my God. Uh, well, okay. Let's see. Oh no. Oh, it's Anissa. Oh no. By the way, this is not going to be on the podcast because I'm completely discombobulated. This is Anissa Joma. That's, uh, that's IDubs's ho or whatever. She said, My dad, who has severe early onset Alzheimer's, has walked off and gone missing. Please, if you live in the Edmonton, Alberta area in Canada and you see him, Please contact me ASAP. Studio. Oh. Well, I don't know. I guess we'll just let that. <laughs> we'll just let that simmer. Good night. <laughs>
washed up All the happy saints go marching in If a saint step out of line You have to start again Cause Jacob's golden ladder Gets slippery at the top And many a happy-go-lucky saint Has made that long, long drop If I'm late Trouble down below If I'm late, don't wait 